Winds out of the east at 14. Pretty good breeze blowing here. 65% and the temperature of 85 degrees. Miami won the toss, elected to defer the option to the second half. Florida then elected to receive. So they will go on offense to open the game. And we will see right away, I think, the main challenge or key of this game, how Florida's offensive line can handle the front seven of the Miami defense. Well, the all-time series, this is the 51st time they have played dead even. Miami has faced Florida more than any other opponent. And look at that, 131 players yeah. suited up for this game who come from high schools in the state of Florida. Some of them played with each other. Many of them played against each other. There's great familiarity between these two teams. Todd Seavers had a wonderful night with kickoffs last week in the win over uh, Florida A&M. And Seavers getting set to kick into a bit of a crosswind. And the deep men for Miami. Taylor Jacobs, the great speedster, and Kiwan Ratliff, number one. Early ball game special teams, also a big key in a game like this. Both teams have explosive players that can make big plays in the kicking game. See how much effect this cross breeze will have. Here's Seavers. We are underway. Not much, huh? Beauty. Touchback. <laughs> And here comes Rex Grossman. Mentioned that he thought about leaving. Checked his options where he thought he might go in the NFL if drafted after his sophomore season. His decision was he would be a late first, mid second. Then he met Ron Zook. And as you said, Todd, Ron Zook recruited him and Taylor Jacobs. And he is a, an advocate now. Yep. Has really bought into everything Coach Zook has put in. And you wonder, is this offense different? This is pretty crazy to start out. Quick screen out to the left, a one hopper, it's incomplete. How about that formation, though? They have four wideouts clustered top of the screen. Time now for the Alamo starting lineups. And let's check the offensive line. Max Starks replaces Mike Pearson at left tackle. DeGore is a freshman at center. Graham, Vernell Brown, a true freshman, the rich redshirt, rather. Taylor Jacobs, Perez, and the tight end, Aaron Walker. Out of the shotgun on second down and 10. Grossman pressure pulls up and it is incomplete and a flag is going. So we're going to have a roughing the passer on the first throwing attempt by Rex Grossman. One of the little changes with the Ed Zonbrecher offense is to move the quarterback son to not make him set up in the same spot every single pass play. Second play of the game they're going to move the quarterback move the pocket and put Grossman outside. Roughing the passer on the defense. 15 yard penalty from the line of scrimmage. He's down. The only problem with that is when you move your quarterback out, it allows linebackers to take a flying shot at your quarterback. Now, this time, Miami gets called for the penalty. But a lot of times, he's going to get hit just because he's outside of the pocket like that. Automatic first down out at the 35 yard line. Lone setback and three wideouts. That's Ben Troop who goes in motion, the extra tight end. Draw play, Ernest Graham. Quick opener, left tackle behind Max Starks and Troop, and he picks up three. Now let's check this Miami defense and the excellence up front. And they do, will rotate eight uh, defensive linemen in. Green, Joseph Walters, and Green, D.J. Williams, Jonathan Vilma, and Howard Clark. And this very young secondary, it's Roll, Taylor, Sykes, and Marshall who get the start. Again, the challenge is for this offensive line to block the front seven of Miami. Second down, seven, play fake. Little pass out to Graham. And Ernest Graham picks up another four on the first down near the midfield goal. Nice little play action fake. Fake it to Ernest Graham. Slip him out of the backfield. Watch Rex Grossman sell the fake, then they cross the backs, and nobody picks up Ernest Graham. You cross the backs against man-to-man -man defense, nobody picked him up, and a nice little play for Florida. And again, you see the no huddle, you see the tempo. They're calling the plays at the line of scrimmage, making the Miami defense be simple, and line up and show what they're doing. Those two losses last year were to Auburn and Tennessee. The Tennessee loss here. Here's the handoff to Graham, tries to reverse directions and picks up Two and a half yards, but he does cross into Miami country 
Cornelius Green and Jamal Green with the tackle. One of the real challenges, if Miami is allowed to defend the run with only six guys around the line of scrimmage and they can play with two deep safeties, then Florida will have trouble. Florida has to make Miami come out of their basic defense and put an extra guy to stop the run. On second down, the quick screen, two tight ends out there to block for Carlos Perez, and Perez out of bounds at the 40-yard line. Interesting formation. He split yeah. Aaron Walker and Ben Troop. Well, and we've seen a variety of formations already in this first possession. There's a triple stack. You got two tight ends out there as lead blockers. It's just a little screen throw to Carlos Perez. And again, a young secondary on the Miami defense throw a lot at him early. Give him a lot of different things to look at in this opening possession. Nice job by Rex Grossman running the show out there. There's the stretch. First down. Ron Zuck, 48 years of age, hometown Loudonville, Ohio. 24th year as a coach, first year as a head coach. Came here after six years in the National Football League. Most recently as a defensive coordinator with the New Orleans Saints. First down and 10, Florida. Miami is not a big blitz team. They like to just line up and play with their four guys. Now already they're dropping a safety down in right in here. An extra guy kind of creeping in there. And here they come. The handoff to Carthen. Slips a tackle, gets to the outside, and then Jamal Green completes the effort initiated by B.J. Williams. And Rand Carthen, interesting that last loss here in December a year ago to Tennessee, Rand Carthen thought he would play because Ernest Graham was injured, but uh, he didn't see much action. Mm -hmm. Rand's dad, of course, Maurice, the offensive coordinator with the Detroit Lions. Second and eight, early going. Grossman has time. Comes right. Good defensive job by Antel Roll on Taylor Jacobs. Yeah, he read the curl the whole way. And he was right in between Rex Grossman and his intended receiver, Taylor Jacobs. We talked about the new coordinator. Here he is right here in the middle. Ed Zonbrecker came from Marshall. Very prolific offense there the last two years with Byron Leftwich. Also coached Chad Pennington at Marshall, mm -hmm. 52 years of age. Native Tennessean. It's third down and eight. First third down situation they've been in. Four man rush to Miami. Grossman steps up, goes down, but he's right down the middle of Aaron Walker. Rex Grossman telling us yesterday, I think Aaron Walker will have a big afternoon. Well, that's because, number one, Tyler, Taylor Jacobs is going to draw a lot of attention. And Miami, won. here's Walker right here. He releases out, and then they just let him go. You see the linebacker split, and Grossman, after he stepped up and bought time, found his tight end in the middle. Miami wants to play two deep safeties and a lot of man-to-man -man coverage. That time, they turned the tight end loose. And again, the quick count, and Ernest Graham with a handoff. Gets inside the 14 near the 13-yard line. Now Graham with 182 yards in the opening game against UAB last week. You think uh, an early key here is their success running? They have to establish some effectiveness running. They don't have to put up huge numbers running, but they've got to do enough to make Miami change what they like to do, basically. Get them out of that standard two deep man under coverage. Three wides to the left side. Walker is tight right. Here's the snap out of the shotgun. Grossman steps up, hit, flag. I think we're going to have a holding. This yeah. one may come back against Florida. We talked about this front of Miami, and you can't really even say front four. You've got to say front eight because they rotate at every position. They do it individually. Watch these four guys, the penetration, the quick push up the side. Nice rush on the outside. That was Jerome McDougal, who didn't play last week. One of the best pass rushers on that Miami defense, but they rotate guys so much, they keep fresh legs going at you all through the game. Now, the idea for defensive coordinator Randy Shannon is to bring in fresh men in the defensive line after 8 to 12 plays, and by the time the game is over, he wants all eight of his players, all of whom he considers starters, to play between 35 and 38 downs. This is Jonathan Vilma, 
who is uh, chatting it over with the referee. Here we go. There are two penalties on the play. Holding on the offense, that penalty is declined. Intentional grounding on the offense, that penalty is accepted. Loss it down at the spot of the pass, Bring down. The reason this is a penalty is because Rex Grossman never got outside of the tackle box when he threw it away. You're allowed to throw it away as long as you get outside of the offensive tackle. And he was still in that zone when he threw the football away. Now third and 17, opening drive of the ball game. Florida now at the 21. Three-man rush. Roseman slips, lobs it out, intercepted. No, incomplete. We've seen two helmets popped off already in the game. Aaron Walker had his knocked off on his catch, and Rex Grossman just got his removed from his head. And that was a, a funny-looking play. This didn't look good. Nothing opened up quickly for Rex Grossman. He almost fell down on his own and then took a shot with his helmet coming off. And again, you see the athleticism. A defensive lineman, Cornelius Green, or actually Andrew Williams, almost getting the pick. Here's Matt Leach, 38-yard field goal attempt. Will not be good. So they chewed four and a half minutes off the clock, but they come up empty. Larry Coker applauding his team's effort once they got inside the clock. Yeah. Matt Leach was the team's punter last year. Replaced Jeff Chandler, missed an extra point last week. Misses a big field goal to start this one. First offensive set now for Ken Dorsey and the Miami Hurricanes. A brilliant season last year in which he finished third in the Heisman voting. The Rex Grossman, Eric Crouch, the senior from California. That's smart. Smart. So smart, like another coach on the field. Quick set up, little pressure, dropped a fumble. That is a fumble. And Dorsey is the first to pounce on it. That slipped right out of his hand. Exactly. And again, now I know these guys are used to practicing in Florida, but in a humid day like this, that football gets wet. Whether it's the center dripping on it, it was actually knocked out. I thought it slipped out, but it was knocked out. Bam Morris, one of the senior linebackers, got a little fingertip on it and enough to knock it loose. And Dorsey alertly falls on it. Bam Hardman, who uh, comes around the right side, second down and 16. And it was tipped by Hardman. There's Mike McTeel, number 59. And the handoff, Willis McGahey breaks a tackle and then is tripped up by Gus Scott. But they had him nailed yeah. for a loss at the 15. But you see the power of Willis McGahey. He is a powerful running back. Here's the offensive line for the Hurricanes, anchored by Brett Romberg. They lost uh, three men to the NFL. The wideouts are Beard Johnson, the tight end, familiar name, Kellen Winslow, his first touchdown catch last week. Third down and nine. Keep an eye on Andre Johnson, the big receiver, is at the bottom of the formation. Dorsey looks his way, comes into the flat. And it is caught by the fullback, Quad Green Hill. Nice defense by Keywan Ratliff. They played zone, they forced Ken Dorsey to throw underneath, and then they came up and made the sure tackle. And a great three and out for the Florida defense, and they should get good field position here. Here's Ratliff back to return the punt, and it will be Freddie Capshaw, who did not play last week, did not punt in the opener. He's got a severely sprained ankle. The result of a scrimmage where he had a block punt prior to the season opener, but this is a fine punt. Yeah. And a fair catch taken by Ratliff. Freddie Capshaw, 44 yards on his opening kick of the game. 9.39 to go in the first. At the Swamp, zip zip. Coming up tomorrow on the NFL on CBS, opening week of the season, regional action for you. The Jets at Buffalo, and it will all begin with Jim and Boomer, Dion and Dan, the NFL Today, tomorrow on CBS. Here's Grossman out of the gun. And Graham. Boy, this is an early indication that August well for Florida. 
This is an excellent run by Ernest Graham. Vision is such a key characteristic of an outstanding running back. Watch Ernest Graham right here see that it's not open where he was going and then cut back this way, all on his own. He did that with his eyes. He hesitated for a second, made the quick cut, and turned it into a nice run. That's a gain of 13 for the 5'9", 215-pounder. On first down, draw play. Graham again comes right. Huge hole. Big gain. Yeah. This, this is, one's for 11. Yeah, and this is good for the Florida offensive line. Again, the challenge for them, make Miami defend the run honestly. That will help them protect Rex Grossman. If they only want to put six in the box, then by golly, you got to run at them and make them stop it. And two plays in a row, Ernest Graham has gashed the Miami defense. Now Willie Green makes his first appearance on the field, and Rand Carthen is there as well. They split on either side of Rex Grossman in the shotgun. Mike DeGory, the redshirt freshman, snaps it back. Little shovel pass inside to Carthen, to Jonathan Bell wow. had done his homework. Yes. I mean, he was blocked. I mean, there was a man right there blocking him, and Jonathan Vilma said, no, you're not going to get me out of this play. I mean, he just made an outstanding read, quickly read it, got off the block, and made the tackle. A real student of the game, loves knowing what everybody's doing, takes great pride in his preparation, gets really upset with himself when he makes a mistake on the practice field. Of course, the rest of his defensive teammates like to let him have it when he does as well. Stepped in for Dan Morgan a year ago and had a terrific year, culminating in the Rose Bowl Championship. Here's the snap on second down. Pressure from the outside from McDougal. Grossman tipped. Knocked down by Matt Walters, number 91. Yeah, Jamal Green got pressure, and that's who put the hit on Grossman, and Matt Walters able to get his hands up. Again, you see this front four. Right in here, this is where it starts. Now, Grossman does a nice job of stepping up in the pocket, but Max Starks just not able to stay with Jamal Green quite long enough to allow Grossman to make the good throw downfield. Third down and eight from the 40. Scoreless first quarter. Grossman pressured again. Incomplete and almost picked off. Carlos Perez, the intended receiver, couldn't hang on. Jerome McDougal with the pressure and the hit on Rex Grossman. And already we've seen Rex Grossman hit three or four times. Pretty good throw under pressure. I mean, you can't throw it much better than that when you're getting hit like this. Jerome McDougal right into the body of Rex Grossman. Uh, here's Jason Hunter had a tough debut last week. He shanked a couple. This one is a good one. Probably should have shanked this one. Yep. <laughs> At least pooch it. Yeah. Jason Hunter sails it out of the end zone. It'll come out to the 20. Coming up later, an all-women's, uh, American women's final, Serena Williams against her sister, Venus Williams. Women's final of the U.S. Open. Prime time after our ball game is concluded. Miami with a two-tight end offense. Now a running set. Dorsey fakes the reverse. This one went for a touchdown last week against Florida A&M when he handed it off to Roscoe Parrish. This time the gift goes to McGahee. The Florida Gator defensive line. Arpege roll started. Clint Mitchell is in there now. The linebackers Hardman, Matt Ferrier, Mike Mateel, and in the secondary, Ratliff, Johnson, Gus Scott, and Robert Cromartie. Our new defensive coordinator John Thompson came from Arkansas. You'll see a lot of movement, a lot of moving around, different looks by this Florida defense, trying to confuse Ken Dorsey. Draw play. Got him behind the line. Clint Mitchell. Interesting story. Missed yeah. all but two games a year ago because of two separate suspensions. Yeah, Sat yeah. out last week to continue it. Has a hard time staying on the field, but when he's on the field, he has a great motor. I mean, he just goes hard. He doesn't always know exactly where he's supposed to go, but he goes hard whatever he's doing. Loss of two, third and eight. Three down linemen. They'll rush five. Scott coming on the blitz. It's caught by Ethnic Sands, and he reverses himself and gets around Robert Cromartie. Yeah. Nice job protecting Ken Dorsey. 
and a nice job by Ethnic Sands, feeling Robert Cromartie on his inside and planting after the catch and wheeling back outside. Watch the end of this route now. He's going to feel Cromartie get inside, and as soon as he feels that, he plants and peels it back to the Miami sideline and adds about 10 more yards. First first down for Ken Dorsey and the Hurricanes. Play fake, Dorsey right side, got a man open, Kellen Winslow Jr. Boy, is this guy going to be good. I mean, he's young, he's still learning, he's still growing into a tight end body, but he's an excellent receiver. May have the softest hands of any of the receivers on the Miami team. Of course, his dad, the great Hall of Famer with the San Diego Chargers, who uh, did not allow his son to play football until relatively late in his life, taught him chess yeah. first. Play fake again. Dorsey a lot of time behind the intended receiver, Winslow, who was alone at the 25. That'll bring up a second down. Well, Butch Davis deciding at a late time to go on to the Cleveland Browns and Larry Coker, 30 year overnight sensation. <laughs> Great coach. I mean, he really is. Uh, you know, and I think unfairly a little bit. Everybody said last year he won the championship with Butch's players. It was Butch's team, but they had two tough road wins at BC and Virginia Tech that he had to keep that team together in the fourth quarter. Flags. Looks like it might be a delay. Prior to the snap, false start, offense, five yard penalty, main second down. Well, Howard Schnellenberger, the coach from 79 to 83, they won a title in 81. Jimmy Johnson led them to a title in 1987. Dennis Erickson in both 89 and 91. Butch Davis was there 95 through 2000 and then gave way to Larry Coker. Quick flip over the head of Kevin Beard, number nine. And that brings up a third and 15. I talked about John Thompson's defense and all the movement. I really like the way that Philip Fulmer described a John Thompson defense. He said it's like a bucket full of minnows, <laughs> which means translated frenetic, unpredictable movement. There's John Thompson right there calling the signals. Came from Arkansas. He said he had his dream job at Arkansas, but uh, was swayed strongly by Ron Zook at Florida. Got the call in Florida in uh, February. Third down and 15. Play fake. Here comes the blitz. They find McGahee. And he works inside the 40, but that will be short of the first down. Tough to make up that lot amount of yardage on a third down play. There's John Thompson, 46 years of age, said he waited 20 years to get his dream job, which was yeah. defensive coordinator in his home state in Fayetteville. And then Ron Zook called him in February, said they'd never met. And uh, Zook came in on a Florida plane to bring John back to Gainesville to talk about it. John said, not that I was easy, but uh, I made up my mind before the plane landed. 53-yard <laughs> field goal, Seavers. That's got plenty of leg. It's good! One of the advantage I think Miami has in this game is in their kicking game. Seavers, an experienced guy, nails this one through with no doubt. And, and that Miami. was a fine hole by Freddie Castro. Absolutely. saw him drill the long field goal. We saw him kick the opening kickoff out of the end zone or deep in the end zone. That was an intentionally high kickoff to allow Miami's coverage team to run down there. When anytime you can stop a team inside the 15 yard line with a defense like Miami has, that is excellent work on the special teams. Remember what Ron Zick told us yesterday. He thought the, the most decisive factor in this game would be special teams yeah. big plays. First and ten, Grossman, ball play, Graham, got a little room, there's a stiff arm. Out of bounds at the 18, a gain of seven. Miami's record 
when scoring first. Pretty respectable. Yep. And it's second down and three. Gators. They moved the ball well in their first two possessions. But a missed field goal, and this time. On Andrew Williams comes through and makes the tackle of Ernest Graham. Well, a nice little stunt this time by the Miami defense. They've been playing pretty straight up. This time the tackle went outside, the end came underneath, and he was unblocked. That was Andrew Williams with nobody picking him up. They confused the left side of the Florida offensive line on that play. And here's where the Florida offensive line, at least in the early going, has had problems, third and long. Yep. And, it, and when you're in definite pass situations, that's when Florida has been having trouble blocking this front four of Miami. They're better off when they keep him guessing whether it's run or pass. Third and six, low snap, Grossman gathers it in, comes right side, has a man, got it! What a catch. Ben Troop, the tight end, number 84. Well, what a throw, because D.J. Williams had excellent coverage on Ben Troop. I mean, there wasn't much room to put this in. Here's Troop. Watch him run the corner route against excellent coverage. And Grossman, he just can't throw it any better than he did right there. Big third down conversion for the Gators. That's a gain of 17, a first down at the 32-yard line. O.J. Small goes wide to the left side. See Florida bringing two tight ends in. This is a run set for them. Miami still with their two deep safeties. Troop steps back. Jacob steps up, and Troop goes in motion. Play fake. Grossman, pressure. A lot of pressure. And it is caught. No, out of bounds. Aaron Walker, but he came down near the floor of the bench. Well, Sean Taylor, the free safety, made a, a beeline for the football, and I think his collision with Aaron Walker caused Walker not to be able to bring this in before he got out of bounds. I mean, Rex Grossman's running for his life, and Sean Taylor gets a little bit of the body and the hand on the football, and then Walker just not able to, to snag it before it went out of bounds. Well, the crowd reacting to the replay looked like his foot might have come down in bounds. Only need one in college. Second down and ten, handoff. And that's Ernest Graham again out to the 38-yard line. Now the crowd got a little angry yeah. when they saw that replay. I'll take another look at it. Grossman unloading it to the sideline. Walker goes up. He's bobbling it right there. It looks like he had it with that left foot in. It looks like he had it. Nonetheless, third down and short now for the Gators. The need is four. Here's Grossman. Gets his protection, but it's a little behind Aaron Walker. It'll be fourth down. That's one Rex wishes he had back because he had a nice thing set up there. Walker crossing the field. He had an opening, would have easily had the first down if they were able to make that connection. And for the day, Grossman now 5 of 11 for 63 yards. Had that string of nine consecutive games a year ago with 300 or more. This is where I think... Florida has to be sound in their punt protection. This is a good one from Jason Hunter. Evan stands, gathers it at the 13. Breaks a tackle. And a flag comes down at the 27 as Sands goes down. We talk so much about special teams. Miami, I think, has always been pretty good on special teams. And when they went into the Big East, Virginia Tech, so good on special teams, it raised Illegal the ball. block in the back. On the return, penalty is 10 yards from the spot of the foul. First down. Steve Spurrier, when he was at Florida, for all his proficiency on offense, didn't put as much emphasis on special teams, maybe, as some other head coaches do. Ron Zook, a former special teams coach, it's a very important part of the of the game and the full preparation from his standpoint. Ron Zook was here as the defensive coordinator, 1991. He was demoted by Steve Spurrier to the special teams position. And Jeremy Foley, the athletic director, says his demeanor, the way he handled the demotion, had a lot to do with why he is the head coach here now. Ultimately, was promoted back to the spot. Timeout, Miami. Three minutes and 14 seconds remaining, first quarter. 
head coach. For more on that, let's go down to Jill Eric. That's right, Vern, athletic director. He is not losing any sleep over hiring Ron Zook. He says the proof is in the pudding. The past eight months have just reconfirmed his belief in him, his passion for the University of Florida, the way he recruits this whole state back in the spring, and also just the way that he's kept the recruits, the players on this team, on this team believing in him and his hard work ethic. He says it showed them why they picked Ron Zook. All right, Jill, athletic director Jeremy Foley, who first talked with Bob Stoops and Mike Shanahan before contacting Ron Zook. Here's McGahee. Oh, once he gets into the secondary, it's frightening if you're the defender. He's got great speed. Well, Andre Johnson is the track star on the Miami team, the fastest on the team. But not too far behind him is McGahee. McGahee is bigger, too, at 225 pounds. He has great speed, and he was uh, one shoestring tackle away from taking that one down the field. McGahee filling the spot that Clinton Portis had a year ago, now in Denver. And Frank Gore had a great season, but went out with an ACL in the spring. Here's Dorsey going to the right. Bam Hardman covering Roscoe Parrish. That's a mismatch. You know, yesterday, John Thompson told us, I think that we can trick Ken Dorsey some with our coverages. And I kind of sat back in my chair. I didn't say anything about thinking, this guy is tough to trick. He is the smartest guy out there. But they tricked him that time. They got him to call an audible. He thought he was going to get one coverage, and he didn't get what he wanted. John Thompson, very unorthodox in some of the things he does. That time, he won the chess match with Ken Dorsey. Second down and 10. Hand off McGahee, breaks the tackle, surges out across the 40 and is down at the 41. And that's a gain of 13 and another Miami first down. Dennis Dodd is on the scene in Gainesville, bringing you his unique insight into the Miami Florida battle and other key weekend games at CBSSportsLine.com or on America Online at our keyword CBS Sportsline. Ran into Dennis coming up the elevator. He had a big suitcase with him. Is it sleeping here in the stadium tonight or what? First and ten, handoff. And a gain of a couple to the 45. That was Quadrine Hill, number 23, out of Sunrise, Florida. You know, we talked about the losses on the offensive line that Miami suffered last year with their two tackles. Brian McKinney, the seventh guy picked in the draft by the Vikings. Joaquin Gonzalez was a seventh round pick of the Browns made that roster new guys up front on the outside but Larry Coker thinks this team might be a better run blocking offensive line they're more physical than those two guys they had last year as good as they were these guys are a little bit better in the running game out of the eye on second down McGahee the deep back now they power the formation to the right side it's Quadrine Hill the fullback nice open field tackle yeah. at the 50 yard line by Kiwan Ratliff. The Quadrant Hill was not supposed to be the starting fullback. They had a guy named Kyle Cobia was going to be the starting fullback. He got hurt. Hill is more built like a tailback at 6'2", 210 pounds. But what he does give you is he's very good coming out of the backfield, as we saw right there, catching the football. A little undersized as a blocking fullback, but a pretty good runner and catcher as well. There's a test for the run blocking prowess of the Miami offensive line. It's third and two at the 50. You better not forget about Andre Johnson at the bottom. Winston, the tight end. Here's McGahee. Looks like he's got it. At the 48-yard line. There's no better way to take a boisterous crowd out of a football game than by running the football successfully if you're a visiting team. And that's what Miami is doing right now. They're chewing up time. They're moving the football. They're moving the chains. And they've quieted this Florida crowd. His current drive now in its seventh play. Roscoe Parrish, number one, goes wide right. Andre Johnson, bottom of the screen. And Ken Dorsey, 27 and 1 as a starter. With time, Andre Johnson climbs the ladder, grabs it. First down, Miami at the 26. Too, too much cushion given by Kiwan Ratliff. I mean, you got to respect Andre Johnson. But you've got to be up a little bit tighter than that. I mean, this is this is too easy for Ken Dorsey. Single coverage. Look at the cushion. You don't even see Kiwan Ratliff in the picture. He's respecting the speed too much, and then he still doesn't make the quick tackle. He's got to get up there and be a little bit closer to Andre Johnson. He's a good cover corner, 
He's got to be a little bit tighter on that. Rob Jodzinski, the offensive coordinator, said he is as strong as Michael Irvin. He's an impressive looking wideout. Parrish and Gethers are on the field together. Here's Dorsey back with a lot of time. And double coverage on Kellen Winslow, and the pass is incomplete. Nice coverage by James Ferrier, the middle linebacker, running with Kellen Winslow. Nowhere for Ken Dorsey to go with the football. We've reached the end of one with our score 3-0. And we'll return to Ben Hill Griffin Stadium right after this message and a word from your local station. They are threatening with a second down now at the 26-yard line. Backs in the eye. Dorsey hands it off. McGahee straight up the middle. And he plunges near the 15, and that could be close for another first down. Vern Lundquist, Todd Blackledge, and Jill Arrington with you from a jam-packed <laughs> Ben Hill Griffin Stadium. Todd's the taller of the two. What are your uh, impressions of the first? Well, similar to when these teams last played in the Sugar Bowl, Miami is the more physical team right now. We've seen that on the defensive line. We're seeing it on the offensive line right now as they're running the football right at them. Very important series right now for the Florida defense to step up. Third and one. They'll throw it. Right side caught by Johnson. First and goal. There is a flag down on the opposite Dorsey side of the formation. I think what the Miami thinking there is this is two down territory. If they don't make this, delay a game on Miami. So negate the easy conversion. You see, the other thing that's happening, because they're running so successfully, it's really put the Florida defense on their heels a little bit in terms of rushing Ken Dorsey. The Florida defense is not bothering Ken Dorsey nearly as much as the Miami defense is bothering Rex Grossman. That is the fourth penalty on the Hurricanes. Third and six. Johnson goes wide left. Sands and Parrish come to the right side. Three-man front for the Gators. They bring four. Dorsey got a man incomplete in the end zone for Ethnic Sands. Miami did a nice job of picking up the blitz. They came with a safety blitz, and Willis McGahee was there to protect his quarterback, but Ken Dorsey not able to make the connection. Take a look. It's coming in from here, and there's McGahee. He's picked up the blitz. He does his job. That allows Ken Dorsey to be in the pocket and make the throw, just not able to connect. Capshaw with the hold. Seavers with the kick on the way. And he has nailed his second. This one from 38 yards out doubles the Hurricane lead. They're up 6-0. Miami up 6-0, getting ready to kick the either Kelvin Kite over Nell Brown. And the sellout crowd looks on as the sun disappears behind Ben Hill Griffin Stadium. Here's Seavers. Same high kick. Taken by Kelvin Kite, number two. Slips a tackle, looks for help. That's Andre Johnson, who drags him down at the 27-yard line. How about that? One of the best wide receivers in college football running down on kickoff coverage and making a heck of a play in the open field. You don't think special teams are important to Miami. One of your best players and one of the best players in the country getting it done on kickoff coverage. Andre Johnson heads to the uh, Miami bench. First down and 10, Florida trailing by six. Here's Grossman, quick setup, ah, good. fires it. Taylor Jacobs, his first catch of the game, he set a career Florida record with 246 last week. And time now for the Aflac. trivia question. Who is the only player to letter in football at both Miami and Florida? I'm a little disappointed we don't have our duck here in the booth. Where is the duck? My man, Bert Fleming. I think he's responsible for the missing duck. On first down, shovel pass. That one went nowhere. Yeah. I like the first down throw to Taylor Jacobs because in the third down passing situations, 
they're having trouble protecting Rex. You got to throw it more when it's a run pass threat and get that guy involved in the game, Taylor Jacobs. Taylor Jacobs was the third option last year behind Jabbar Gaffney and Ray Caldwell. And he is uh, far and away the lead man in the offensive scheme now when the passing game is considered second down and 10. There's a stunt defensively. Grossman has time. Down the middle, intercepted. Picked off by Antrell Roll. And Antrell Roll is on one. There's a flag down. Roll finally captured at the 20 yard line. Well, so far, I think this young secondary of Miami has been up for the challenge. Roll is a sophomore from South Dade High School, and he has excellent coverage on O.J. Small. And he just steps right in front of Small and catches it with his hand. Rex Grossman acting like this one is coming back, and the Gators are still going to have the ball. I don't know what the penalty was. Now you see the pressure again from Jerome McDougal. Boy, Rex knew right away that thing was picked, too. He popped back off the ground as quick as he could. Pass interference on the defense. Ball be placed at the spot of the ball. Wow, what a break for the Florida Gators. And it certainly, I, don't, I can't imagine it was Antro Roll. No, I don't think it was on roll. I mean, he was in good position, made a good play. It had to be away from that where the penalty occurred. And Ron Zook. Boy, they know he knows they dodged one right there. That's Mark Stoops, the defensive secondary coach, younger brother of Bob Stoops, of course, the head coach at Oklahoma. I talked to him down there on Wednesday. He said, you know, three weeks ago, I was really worried about this secondary, but I feel pretty good about our guys right now. Well, Miami has to use a timeout. CBS Sports coverage of the Home Depot SEC on CBS continues after this word from your local station. 43 to go second quarter. During the timeout, we searched through our various replay systems yeah. and could not find anything that resembled pass interference. The only thing that we saw was Roll did grab the jersey briefly of O.J. Small, but not enough to be a pass interference call. First down and 10. Here's Grossman. Not on the mark. Had a chance again. Same thing. First down, throw the quick slant. Try to get your best receiver to break a sweat and get involved and see with the way Miami plays defense they've got those two deep safeties and in essence they can double cover one receiver all the time they can roll over the top on Taylor Jacobs you see the safety safeties right here he's ready to, to double cover on Taylor Jacobs on this play right now second down and ten the snaps it back they hand it off to Gray on the slips as he makes his cut tackled at the 45 yard line Stop is made by Andrew Williams, number 99. And this brings up a third down. Well, the numbers for Rex Grossman, 7 to 14, 75 yards. And off the mark just a couple of yeah. times. Off the mark and under pressure. You know, I mean, he hasn't been able to be in rhythm. And both of these quarterbacks, Rex Grossman and Ken Dorsey, are rhythm quarterbacks. They want to get that snap, set their feet, and throw the ball with no bodies around them, no hot breath blowing on them. Right now, Miami's getting to him a little bit. Stunts again. Here comes the pressure. Grossman is hit as he lets it go. And again, number 95, Jerome McDougal. Yeah. I mean, and see, this takes a toll on a quarterback. I mean, even though Grossman keeps getting up, McDougal just right around Jonathan Cologne, the youngster out of Miami. He's starting at right tackle. He's a sophomore out of Miami. And McDougal just uh, just kind of toyed with him on that one, ran right around him. Fourth down, Jason Hunter on the punt. High, fairly short. And gets a Florida bounce inside. The 15 yard line, a 33 yard punt, effective. 11.44 to go, first half, 6 0, Miami. First half, Miami up 6 0. Their 23 game undefeated string on the line. First visit here since 1986. First regular season meeting between these two teams since 1987. First down and 10. We have confirmed with the sideline that the biggest play of the game was 
a pass interference call on Antrell Roll, who made the interception. We'll bring that back in just a second. First down and 10. Backs in the eye. McGahee out to the 17 yard line. Andrell Roll intercepted Rex Grossman, returned to 32 yards, and here's the call. And I've watched this several times, and I don't see interference. Now, all you're going to see is a slight grab of the jersey right there, all right, with the left hand. They didn't call defensive holding. They called pass interference, and that, boy, that's a tough call by the Big East officiating crew against the Miami Hurricanes. That negated that man's interception and a first down for Miami at the floor to 20. Here's a slight play fake, and... Pressure. Kevin First Beard. Time. Yep. First time that they're able to get pressure on Ken Dorsey, and it's Marcus Okendo Johnson. Again, neither one of these quarterbacks are nearly as effective when you get people around them, when you can bother them. And this is the first time Florida is able to get somebody right into the face of Ken Dorsey. Not able to set his feet, and the result was a bad throw. Third and six to 17. Crowd comes alive. Pressure from the outside. Dorsey steps up, pulls back, finds the receiver open on Ray Johnson, but it's incomplete. See, he had to move his feet. When he moves his feet, he's not nearly as accurate. It was interesting talking to Ron Zook yesterday. He said, you know, when we played New Orleans, when I was at New Orleans and we played the St. Louis Rams, nobody was better in the NFL than Kurt Warner. But when he had to move his feet and when we could bother him, he wasn't nearly as good. Same thing true for Ken Dorsey. Here is Freddie Capshaw, the senior from Rock Springs, Wyoming. On the punt. Kiwan Ratliff awaits it. Fair catch call, and the ball taken at the 46-yard line. 37-yard punt. Nothing on the return. And by far the biggest play of the game thus far. A negated pass interception. And a 10 at their own 47-yard line for this full house at the Swamp. So named after these two teams last played here. Named by Steve Spurrier. First down and 10. Big series for Florida. They've got good field position. They've got to do something here with the football. Quick setup. Little fake pattern. Taylor Jacobs out of the tackle. Then Jennings makes the stop inside the 40. Maurice Sykes was trying to help him. Really nice call by Ed Zonbrecker. They've tried to run slant, slant. This time they fake in and go out, and Jennings was frozen with the pump fake. Excellent call by Ed Zonbrecker in that timeout. Run the slant, now fake the slant, and get outside on the fade, and they get a first down. And the first down comes at the 38-yard line. Grossman. <laughs> Marks out the signals. Gain of 14 in the last play. That little half roll looks back to his left. Flag is down on the far side. The pass is complete. They tried to throw a throwback screen to Ernest Graham, and it was snuffed out by Miami, and he did a nice job of just throwing it away. That will cost Miami five. What penalties have hurt Miami here in this first half? Six penalties, 52 yards. And a couple of them at very critical times that have kept drives Offside, going. On the defense, five-yard penalty. You can put down. And that expands the options now for Ed Zonbrucker, first and five. Miami is not a tricky defense. They line up and press coverage with their corners right up in the face of the receivers every play with two safeties deep. And they play all their coverages out of this one look, a press look. Sometimes they play man, sometimes they play zone, but they always start looking like this on the receiver. On first and five, the handoff. Rand Carthen with a stiff arm comes left to the 25. First and 10, Florida. Nice run by Carthen, and they actually used Ernest Graham as a little bit of a decoy on that play. Graham faked the other way. They crossed the backs, and Carthon slipped out the other side. Watch now. Graham's going to fake. Carthon, they cross the backs up. And Rand Carthon with a nice stiff arm on DJ Williams gets the first down. 
First and ten at the 25. Florida trails by six. Ben Troop is the man in motion. And somebody moved in that offensive line. Aaron Walker, the tight end, the other tight end, was in a down position and started early. Prior to the snap, false start, offense, five-yard penalty, remains first down. Well, a momentum killer. You know, you got things going. You've made a couple first downs. You got the Miami defense on their heels a little bit. Now you get behind the chains here on first and 15. Just inside the 30-yard line. Grossman, same made pattern, same result. Yeah. And see, part of this problem is the guy over there who's playing, Kelly Jennings, has a big cast on his right hand. He's got a thumb injury that he's battled all through the summer. You see the cast. He can't jam a receiver the way the other cornerbacks can. He's a little tentative putting that hand on the receiver, and they did the same thing. Fake the slant in and break it outside. Second down and four. After the game of six, Graham gets the give, has an opening, surges for the goal line, touchdown, Florida. Blocking up front, it's a trap. Shannon Snell with the trap block, number 75. And Ernest Graham slips through the crack and into the end zone. What a run by Ernest Graham. Extra point is not home, and that provides Florida with a one-point edge. They convert their best field position of the first half into their first touchdown. Left guard Shannon Snell, and then what Maurice Sykes learns is you're not going to knock Ernest Graham down just by colliding him. You better wrap your arms around him. Ernest Graham, when they played in the Sugar Bowl two years ago, 15 carries, 136 yards and a touchdown, the main bright spot. And he told us when we visited with him on Friday, he's been waiting for this game, waiting for two years to get another shot at the Hurricanes. Now Florida will kick off for the first time, and Matt Petrovich, an old-fashioned straight-on kicker, who's also something to behold on kickoff coverage. He had eight solo tackles a year ago, and here is his kick. This will be taken by Gethers, and Jason Gethers out to the 21-yard line. Guess who's down there? Matt Petrovich. He was a nose guard in high school. He's a little goofy, Bird. <laughs> Well, time now to answer the trivia question. The only player to letter in football at both Miami and Florida. His name is Phil Kaplan. He played guard and linebacker at Florida in 42, Miami in 43, served in the armed forces, came back and completed his eligibility in 1946 at Miami. And listen, the crowd is back in it. The swamp crowd is back in the game. And Phil Kaplan is among those in attendance, and he's with Jill Arrington. That's right, Vern. I found you the only man to letter for both schools. Are you torn here today? Which team are you rooting for? Uh, uh, actually, I'm rooting for Miami. That's because I live down there, and if I didn't, I never would able to go back. What do you remember about the intensity of this rivalry? Oh, well, it's beautiful. That's what college football is all about. And be something like this, the, the series never should have been stopped. It should have been going on just all along, but uh, it's, it's good that it's back again. I'm very happy about it. Thank you, Mr. Kaplan. Hey, Vern, back to you. Thank you, Jill. Well, the series revived, but only for a couple of years, and it's revived because a 12th game has been added to the schedule this year and next, so they'll play in Miami next year. He said he may not be able to go back to Miami if he didn't root for the Canes. He may not get out of the swamp <laughs> if he keeps rooting for him today. Third and one at the 30, a 7-6 game. By the way, his record is the only man to letter for both teams. Will end, I'm sure, next year. Brock Berlin, who lettered here last year, transferred to Miami. 
and is sitting out a redshirt season at quarterback this year. Here's Dorsey, deep down the middle, double coverage. Todd Johnson is back there. That's excellent coverage by Florida because Ken Dorsey had a lot of time and he couldn't go anywhere good with the football. John Thompson told us about Todd Johnson. I love this guy. He is always, always, always in the right spot. And here he is in the right spot, knocking the ball away from Andre Johnson. A headsy free safety for the Florida Gators. About three weeks ago, Todd Johnson suffered a concussion during practice, but back and uh, healthy again. Look out. Blocked it. They blocked it off Capshaw. Todd Johnson with the block. Special teams. When Ron Zook was demoted as the defensive coordinator and made the special teams coach, they became one of the best special teams in the country. Todd Johnson just made the play on defense right up on the inside. They forced the personal protector, D.J. Williams, to block somebody else. Nobody, I mean, Gus Scott wasn't blocked either. He was there for the recovery. This is excellent execution by Florida. The block and the recovery, and the Gators knocking on the door again. In 1994 and 95, while Ron Zook was the special teams coach, the Gators blocked a total of 12 kicks. Now, first down, just outside the 10. And the play clock, boy, my goodness. Delay a game, offense, you know, that, five-yard penalty. That, that shouldn't happen when you're coming off the sideline. This is a team that wants to play with a, a fast tempo all the time. And, boy, you just can't, you just can't let that happen. Now, you got to remember, too, this is still a relatively new system for Rex Grossman and all these offensive football players. New terminology. They've had a full spring with it and a full summer camp, but... They're still growing into it. And that time, they got a little caught up in the communication. Florida 67% in the end zone, once inside the red zone last year. Here's Carthen dragged down behind the line by Andrew Williams. Great penetration. Again, this front eight. And I say that because they rotate so many guys. You see big number 75 there, Vince Woolfork. He's not even a starter, but he may be one of the best defensive linemen in the country at 6'2", 350 pounds, a, a powerful athlete. Two sacks last week against Florida A&M. Second down. Grossman back. Gets time, goes in the middle for double coverage, and it's incomplete intended for Aaron Walker. Well, Rex Grossman has felt the breeze yeah. of the hurricanes and today. And that, that last play, he didn't set his feet. He's been knocked around, helmet taken out, banged around, hit after the play, passes knocked down, and that, that takes its toll. I mean, it, it forces a quarterback to hurry throws and to not set his feet, and that's exactly what he did on that throw. Third and 15, third and 16. What a stand so far by the Miami defense in the sudden change situation. Again, a straight four-man rush, Grossman. And the coverage was excellent by Andre Roll. Excellent coverage. I mean, Rex Grossman had plenty of time. He set his feet. Just nowhere to go with the football. And again, I'd have to say this young, inexperienced secondary of Miami is holding up very well. And that'll bring Matt Leach on for the field goal. The block kick gives him the first down at the 11-yard line, then the delay of game. Yeah. And, and the draining of the emotion in this stadium was palpable yeah. when the delay was called from give, 34 yards out. Give credit to that Miami defense. Leach. Got it. So they do come away with three. Had to get something there. Absolutely. Six Florida this Thursday on CBS. Every 30 seconds, someone disappears. You read the stories of families torn apart. Now meet the team who can find the missing and bring them home without a trace. Thursday this fall after CSI on CBS. Well, 
seven and a half minutes to halftime. And coming up at halftime, Tim Spencer. Tim and Spencer. Oh, my they goodness. They're, they're preparing. Getting Cats. ready for the on camera. Cats on a hot tin roof. Yeah. Up there above us. I've never known Tim to duck away from the camera. <laughs> 7.30 to go, 10-6. And Petrovic, who is a delight to watch after he kicks the ball. Nice kick. That's back. Now the series started in 1938. It was uh, discontinued in 1987. Perhaps the most famous game this SEC moment presented by Sonic November 27 1971 it came became known as the Florida flop John Reeves was the quarterback he was uh, for Miami in quest of a national passing record they wanted to get the ball back one more time to give him a chance to hit Carlos Alvarez so the Florida players under Doug Dickey fell down allowing Chuck Foreman to score to get the ball back and Chuck Foreman is still yeah. angry about it yeah, that's, uh, well, you don't do that. <laughs> the Florida flop. Here's Dorsey. Kellen Winslow. Gus Scott makes the tackle. At the 29-yard line. Now, Reeves, after they got the ball back, he did throw a pass to Alvarez for 15 yards, and so he did hold, uh, a, a, Miami fans will argue, forever, a tainted record. Well, what I didn't know, which I heard about this morning, was that there was a punt return for a touchdown in the possession previous, or, you know, they may have been able to get it without going to such ridiculous measures, but uh, that's the stuff that rivalries thrive on, right? <laughs> Hand off McGahee comes right, gets a good block from Eric Winston, the big tight end, the true freshman out of Midland, Texas. That's a gain of 15 yards. And you see, Ken Dorsey is not going to get rattled. I mean, he's been in enough big games. He's only lost one game as a starter. He's got great poise and maturity. And he's just keeping everybody calm. Like, hey, guys, it's only 10 to 6. Let's do what we do. He hit the pass to Winslow. They get the big run to McGahee, and now all of a sudden they're right out by the 50 yard line. First down and 10, Brett Lomberg. Eric Winston is on the field. There's McGahee. Down at the 46. Now Ken Dorsey in his senior season. Brilliant career at Miami. And he particularly excels when he faces a top 10. Team. And that, that says a lot. I mean, I, you know, 11 touchdowns, only three interceptions against top 10 opponents. I think a guy who plays big in big ball games, uh, there's something special about it. I think both of these quarterbacks have done that in their career. Second down and eight. Gathers. Roscoe Parrish is wide to the left. Here's Dorsey looking deep, fires it out for Ethan Sands incomplete. Corey Bailey, number seven was over on Ethnic Sands, number seven. Both defenses are playing well here in the first half. I mean, they're covering the receivers down the field. They're getting to the quarterback a little bit. They're giving up some plays in the running game, but when it counts, they've been able to come up with big play. And here's another big one, third and eight against John Thompson's defense. 5.40 to go first half. Andre Johnson up top against Kiwan Ratliff. Man-to-man -man coverage, Kiwan's way inside. Comes the corner blitz. They fire it out to Winslow. Bailey and the lead might have garnered the first down for Winslow and the Hurricanes. Yeah, that's a nice decision. I mean, Winslow, again, he's still growing into the position as a tight end, but he's 230 pounds. Reported to camp about 240. He lost a little weight, but watch him drag the defender enough to get close to that first down. Man-to-man -man coverage, tight end against a smaller defender, and then he fights for the first down. And got it. Corey Bailey's 185 pounds. Kellen Winslow's 230 pounds. That's a good matchup for the Miami offense. First and 10 at the 46-yard line. Clock with 5.27 to go before the break. Larry Coker, 54 years of age, 30 years an assistant. Started out high school coach for seven years in Oklahoma. 
graduate of that cradle of coaches, Northeastern Oklahoma State. <laughs> First down and 10. Here's Dorsey, little pattern underneath, and Andre Johnson let it go right through his hands. And I mentioned the cradle of coaches because Ron Zook, another career assistant until this year, did graduate from the cradle of yeah. coaches, Miami of Ohio. And I really think that's what makes both of these guys pretty special, in my opinion. The fact that they were longtime assistant coaches, didn't get a head coaching job till late in their career, probably at some point maybe questioned whether they would ever become head coaches. So take a look at that. That's up in my neck of the woods, Miami of Ohio and Oxford. Some great coaches that have come out of there. Draw play, McGahee gets some help from the umpire. Up the middle inside the 20. Well, Marty stopped it, but not before he picked up 27 yards. Great answer drive by the Miami offense. They started down in their own territory on the 20, and they methodically run and play action past their way right down into scoring territory. Nice job by McGahee following the lead block in there by Chris Myers, his right guard, and then you see the strength. I mean, he is a powerful, powerful running back. Now he gives way to Jason Gethers, who picked up 199 yards last week, and he is going to get a bunch on this play. You're seeing that strength of the Miami offensive line right now. I mean, they're grinding on him right now. I don't think the Florida defense is tired. They shouldn't be. But this Miami offensive line, now they're experienced on the inside. You see Romberg and Haji Razuli. Those guys are returning starters. Chris Myers on the inside has played some. They're new on the tackle. But again, they're good, good run blockers. Time called by Florida with 435 to go first half. Scores both field goals to take a 6-0 lead. 18-yard run by Ernest Graham, and the extra point gave Florida a 7-6 lead. A block punt gave them a first down at the 11-yard line as Todd Johnson blocked the punt and Freddie Capshaw, but a delay of game penalty gave them a first down and 15. They had to settle for three, and they lead for the moment, 10-6. Yeah. And really, the challenge right now is for the inside triangle of the Florida defense. Brian Savalio's in there, Tron LeFevre's in there, and Reed Fleming is in there as a the middle linebacker right now. Because all this running that Miami's doing is coming right up inside, right at the heart of the Florida defense. And after the Gethers run, they've got a first and goal at the six. Now Andre Johnson breaks out wide left, matched up against Kewan Ratliff. Double tight ends, play fake. Go in the corner, the fade route, he's there. Caught, touchdown, Miami. See, when you run that effectively, it makes it tough to play pass defense because you got to respect run. You're not going to pressure the quarterback. They fake the run. And the same thing that we've seen from Florida. Watch him set him up. He's going to fake the quick slant, plant the right foot, and then back to the corner, and Dorsey delivers the ball high and outside. Impossible to cover, single cover, against a big receiver like that. There's the extra point. Seavers... Knocks it home. Ken Dorsey's 62nd career touchdown pass. He's the all-time leader in Miami. There have been some pretty good ones you've received. 13 to 10. They've reclaimed the lead on Dorsey's touchdown pass to Andre Johnson. That's a championship team, you know, that responds that way. They get the block punt. They hold. They don't give up an inch after the block punt. They force the field goal, even though they're behind and the crowd's coming back in the game. They take the next kickoff and go 80 yards for the touchdown. Very, very impressive. And Andre Johnson continues his duty on the special teams. And now Taylor Jacobs is back in as a kick returner. And the last time he was in, they tried a little reverse with Keewon Ratliff. Just keep an eye and see if they try to get the ball in the hands of Taylor Jacobs. That was good kick coverage the last time these two were back. But they worked on this reverse in practice on Thursday. There's Seavers with the kick, and no concern about yeah. a reverse there. Uh, Seavers has really been impressive on his kickoffs mm -hmm. again tonight. Sundays this fall, there's 60 minutes of comedy after 60 minutes. First, 
Becker moves to Sunday, then catch Bram and Alice, a new comedy from the producers of Frasier. It all starts Sunday, October 6th, right here on CBS. First down and 10 from the 20. Florida trails by three. Inside route, Jacobs bobbled it. And he had some room to run. Let's go back and take a look at the touchdown. You'll see what Ken Dorsey saw. Right up here, single coverage. Nobody helping from inside. He says, I know what I've got. I've got my big guy running a corner route. I'm going to have protection because we're keeping the backs in. And that's like stealing for Ken Dorsey. He got the coverage he wanted, and he delivered the football. Second down and 10 after the incomplete pass. Little pitch, Graham. Jonathan Vilma is right there to stop that one. Well, what a Saturday this has been on CBS. Those terrific matches in the men's semis this afternoon. And coming up later tonight, the women's final of the U.S. Open. Serena Williams, Venus Williams again. Third and nine at the 21. Big play right now because Miami's starting to seize the momentum a little bit in this football game after that touchdown. Miami brings three. Grossman... Short. Perez, but he's caught at the 25. It'll be fourth down. Good defense again. I'm impressed with the way that Antrell Roll is playing. And he got the interference call, which I still think was a bad call, but he's been pretty sharp in man-to-man -man coverage. Now Jason Hunter, who is a walk-on, a transfer from junior college. Not listed in the media guide in here. The spot in two days. Fake punt. No, he didn't nope. fake it. He just thought he was going to get it blocked. That was not a fake punt. I think he just thought he, if he kicked it, it was going to get blocked, and he got confused. Again, you've got new punters, a new punter, and a new kicker for Florida. We saw a block punt by Florida. And I don't think this was a fake. He just thought it was going to get blocked, and it might have had he kicked it. He pulled it down and then tried to do something with it. Watch Jason Hunter. He's going. He's a little flustered right there. He, he just got flustered. He bobbled the snap yeah. to start with, and uh, everything went south from there. And now there is a penalty, personal foul against Florida. Yeah. Well, this is gut check time now for Ron Zook's team. They had an ugly offensive series right there. They don't execute the punt. And now his defense, which got gashed on that last drive, is right back on the field. Well, Hunter last week against UAB had a tough start in his debut at Florida. Shanked a couple. Now bobbles the snap. Here's McGahee, good defensive effort by the Gators. Three minutes to go, first half. Well, the three highlight plays of the first half, to my mind, the negated interception by Antel Roll, and then a block punt on one side, and the punt coverage by yeah. Miami here. Miami was able to answer their block punt by holding the Gators to a field goal, and the Gators hoping to do the same thing here. Andre Johnson goes out against Ratliff. And three men are split off wide to the right. And it looks like single again out there. Todd Johnson, oh, he's moving now late. Dorsey looks underneath. Anthony Sands, touchdown. <laughs> 63 career touchdowns for Ken Dorsey. Ken Dorsey saw it, boy. I tell you, he sees things quickly, and he makes quick decisions. What Ken Dorsey's going to see here, he's going to see Todd Johnson kind of cheating over to help on Andre Johnson. And by doing that, when he tries to move back to the middle, he's out of position to make a good tackle on Ethnic Sands. Sands catches it in the middle and takes it in. Extra point is up and good. Ethnic Sands, a one-time quarterback, on the receiving end of this Ken Dorsey toss. the break 14 Miami points in the last two minutes and eight seconds and you could just feel 
the uh, momentum changing. Miami taking control after that first touchdown, and then the three and out by their defense, and they go right back in and score. And Ron Zook, the thing he has to be most concerned with right now, with 2.22 left in the first half, is his team is starting to get knocked around a little bit too much. They're being out physical by the Miami Hurricanes again. Here's Sievers with the kick. And again, pumps it right through the end zone. And a touchdown pass from Dorsey to Ethnic Sands worth another look. Yeah, he did a nice job. He came off his primary target. He finds Ethnic underneath. The receiver in front of him kind of cleared out the middle, and then a nice little stutter move faked out Todd Johnson. And Todd Johnson is an excellent player who's a good open field tackler, but that time no match for Ethnic Sands. Dorsey rests, Rex Grossman back on. Second and third in the Heisman voting last year. Eric Crouch, of course, was the winner. Scuts. Grossman across the middle for Perez. Incomplete, and Rex Grossman got hammered by McDougal. And down again. I mean, it, it didn't interfere with the throw, but it takes its toll. And what it does is it makes him maybe short arm the next one. He stands in there. He's backing up a little bit as he throws because he knows he's going to get hit. And right now, Rex Grossman has missed five of his last six passes. And the Miami defense is cranking it up a little bit. Second down and ten. Draw play. Graham. That's going to set up a third and eight. As we hit the two minute mark of the first half. Miami is is smelling blood a little bit right here because if they can get another stop on this third down they're going to go after the punter Jason Hunter again and even if they don't get it they'll get good field position again here with the wind behind them. So this is a big third down play right now for Rex Grossman. Miami has one timeout left. I think Florida should take a timeout. They, they look really confused right now on this play. Three seconds on the play clock. They get the snap. Three-man rush. Grossman. That one should have been picked off. And he's hit again. A three-man rush going against five linemen. And Rex Grossman is on his backside again. And that's not supposed to happen. When you're blocking five on three, your quarterback's not supposed to get knocked to the ground. But there he goes again. And, and now the clock is stopped. And Miami's going to get the football back in good position. Jason Hunter back to attempt the punt. Bobble the last snap. This one's a little high, but the return is on all the way. Not a particularly effective punt, but it will bounce. And it is picked up by Sean Taylor. Well, not a real smart play by Sean Taylor uh -uh. to go in there uh, and, and get around that football. But nonetheless, he's able to handle it cleanly. And Miami will get the football. Miami's taking control of the line of scrimmage, Vern. I mean, on both sides. Their offensive line is taking control, and the defensive line has taken control. And right now, Ron Zook needs to find a way to stop the bleeding and get his team into the locker room. Now Ron Zook in his second game as the head coach of the Florida Gators. When he got into coaching, made a list of top ten goals in his life, and head coach of Florida was on that list. First down and ten. McGahee goes left, gets a good block on the corner. An excellent block by Roscoe Parrish. He may be the smallest guy out there on the field. Roscoe Parrish is 5'9", 165 pounds, and he gets an excellent block on Cromartie, which enables the, them to get to the sideline. Great block by Roscoe Parrish. After the uh, clock stops to move the chain, it uh, is restarted. We're under a minute to play. Again, the calmness of Ken Dorsey. Not rattled at all. His offensive line has control. Fires it incomplete. Just behind Andre Johnson. In front of Kiwan Rattler. Well, Ken Dorsey from, grew up five minutes from the University of California campus. Thought about going to Cal. They signed another quarterback. He thought about going to Tennessee. They got a verbal commitment from Chris Sims, so he crossed Tennessee off the list. Wound up at Miami, where he has become a terrific quarterback. 
Mom and Dad, his brother Adam, Mom and Dad, Tom and Maggie are here. Here's Dorsey across the middle. And Andre Johnson to the 31 yard line. 14 yards on that one. Miami with one timeout left. Ken Dorsey trying to save it. See how well they played on the road. They're in the hurry up here. Here's Dorsey. Hit as he lets it go, but Winslow's got it. And Cromarty with the tackle at the 21. They're going to spike the ball now. Again, Dorsey trying to save that last timeout. He's going to get everybody lined up and spike the football. But the officials stopping the clock for him on this one. Probably going to measure. You just feel right now that Florida is just hanging on for dear life. I mean, they are hanging on because 10 points is not insurmountable against this defense. But if it gets to be 17, that's a whole different ball game against a front like the Miami Hurricanes have on defense. There's the stretch. First down Miami. Well, the Hurricanes excel on the road, as you saw, 78 and 19 since 1983. A road winning percentage of 80%. Well, they've always kind of had the mentality that they will play anybody, anywhere, at any time. And they, you know, they've kind of tried to live up to that, and they've sure done that. 26 seconds to go. First and 10. Miami has one timeout remaining, Florida two. Out of the gun. Romberg will snap it back. Dorsey will run, and he is wide open out of bounds at the 10-yard line. Another first down with 12 seconds to go. When you play man-to-man -man coverage, and you don't expect the quarterback to scramble nobody accounts for him everybody's running in coverage Ken Dorsey sees the like the parting of the blue sea and takes off and he's smart too now he says I'm going to get as much as I can and then get out of bounds and stop the clock again saving my timeout. first and goal at the nine Dorsey back, drills it, incomplete at the three-yard line intended for Kevin Beard. With your permission, I'm going to add a non-play to my list of significant occurrences. Okay. After the blocked punt on Freddie Capshaw, the delay of game right. call against Florida. First yeah. down and 10 with momentum. They had a 7-6 lead. Delay of game call against the Gators. They wind up settling for three. Now they trail by 10. And didn't gain a yard in that entire possession. They went back five and then stayed there. Second and goal. Dorsey quick setup goes for Winslow. Intercepted. Yeah, I think yes. he made the catch. Todd Johnson did a great job of keeping his foot inbound. Now Johnson gets the interception, but he had help on this play. Kellen Winslow going against Carter man to man. Now watch Carter get in there and get his hand on the football. It popped it out for his safety, Todd Johnson. Good job with the officials conferring with each other. Boy, what a play by Deshaun Carter. In there, man to man against a big tight end. He gets his hand up inside and strips the ball out, and Johnson catches it, left foot down. A good interception. And again, the Gators. Holding on for their life. Get to the locker room only down 10. Miami leads by 10, 20 to 10. As we reach the halftime break. And let's go down to Jill Arrington. Coach Sook, you told us yesterday that this team had something to prove out here today. What have they proven to you in the first half? Well, you know, we, we played extremely good football until right here at the end. You know, we've kind of lost our poise a little bit, but we got to come back. It's just we've told them all week. It's a 60-minute game. we still got 30 to play. Our guys are fired up, and then we got we got to go in, regroup, and go, man, go. Especially your offensive line of scrimmage is facing a lot of adversity. How are you going to deal with it? Well, we we got to we, we got to make sure we keep Rex protected. But we still we we got some things we can do to keep the keep the rush off. They're doing a lot of twisting right now and causing some problems. But we got some things we got to, we're going to have to do to get uh, to get them off uh, off the pressure. All right, coach. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Jill. Get the idea that Ron Zook is a high energy guy. That's the end of the first half. It's 20 to 10.
Tim Brando, Spencer Tillman, live here in Gainesville with the Gateway Halftime Report. Miami leading at 20 to 10 as we get set for the start of the second half. And let's go down to Jill Arrington. Coach Coker, the offense seemed to get off to a bit of a slow start, but really found their rhythm in the second quarter. How are you going to maintain that momentum in this half? Well, we have to dial up our energy, Jill. It's, it's, the game's a long way from over. They're very explosive, but I felt better about our offense in the second quarter. I think we made the noise bother us a little bit early, but we did get in the rhythm. We've got to maintain that rhythm. Yeah, Coach, your players said they could play anywhere, anytime. How are you pleased with the defense, your defensive backs, and that defensive line taking care of business? I think they played very well. They played hard. They made some mistakes, but we played extremely hard. We made a lot of plays, so we just have to dial up the energy and keep it going in the second half. All right, Coach, thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you, Jill. We're a minute or so away from the start of the third quarter from the Swamp in Gainesville. Miami leads it 20 to 10. We get set for the start of quarter number three. Matt Petrovich will kick it off. Andre Johnson, Jason Gethers are the deep men for Miami. This one returnable, grabbed by Gethers at the nine. Tackled at the 22-yard line. Well, 20 to 10 the score. How did we get where we are? Let's take you back in the first half. One of the most significant plays, this interception by Ontrell Roll. Rule pass interference. And Todd Johnson blocked a capshaw punt. But Florida had to settle for three problems of their own on special teams. As this uh, punt snap was bubbled, that put it in the hands of Ken Dorsey. He found Anthony stands for the first of two touchdowns within two and a half minutes. And Miami came from four down to lead by ten. And here is Willis McGahee, who picked up 13, uh, 112 yards in the first half of the game. And now 14.39 to go in uh, Florida. What was the conversation at the half, Todd? Well, I think quite simply for Florida, they've got to buck up here in the second half. I mean, they've got to answer the challenge physically. Their defense is on the field first. They've got to do a better job against the running game. They gave up an average of seven yards per carry. When they're on offense, they got to knock some people off the ball for their running game, and they've got to protect Rex Grossman. If they don't get tougher, they're going to get blown out of this game. Here's Dorsey back to throw under a little bit of pressure, but he gets it into the hands of Andre Johnson out to the 34-yard line. Now let's uh, take a statistical look at halftime. Miami with 134 yards and a 7.1 yards per carry average. And they just ran it right down their throat there, particularly in the second quarter. And a very modest passing total for Rex Grossman, underlining the fact that he was under intense pressure. In the no first big plays. They took away all the deep stuff because they never had to get out of their basic defense and get out of the two deep safety. So everything had to be thrown underneath. Stunts by the Florida defense. Dorsey with time. Finds Roscoe Parrish. He can scamper, and he is out of bounds. Pushed there by Mike Teal after a gain of 18. Former high school quarterback. Yep. Very slippery, very elusive as a kick returner. Reminds a lot of the Miami coaches of Santana Moss. He's got that kind of big playability. And you can see the quick moves and the elusiveness and then the speed. And again, you don't see any blue jerseys around Ken Dorsey. I can only count one time when he was hit in that first half. You cannot give a quarterback that good that much time. McGahee gets the handoff and just slithers through. Now Todd Johnson giving chase, but another huge run for Willis McGahee. Picked up 39 on that one. One of the things that John Thompson told us was that their middle linebacker, James Ferrier, was going to have to get more physical. Number 43. There he is getting blown off the ball, and that enables Willis McGahee to bust that thing outside. I mean, you've got to be tough at the middle linebacker position, and Matt Ferrier in there, the junior out of Petersburg, Virginia, just got driven off the ball on that one. McGahee over 150 yards. Ferrier taking the place of the outstanding Andre Davis and struggling. Here's McGahee this time cut down as he tests the middle, and flags accompany him down. There are two on the ground. I think I called him James Ferrier. You did. That's his older brother, who was a 
great player at Virginia. I see you brought it up. I was going to try and ignore it. It's worth bringing up. Again. <laughs> uh, here is uh, Matt Ferrier. Started three games when Andre Davis was out with uh, a knee injury two years ago, but uh, back to back 100 yard efforts put him on the bench and he stayed there behind. Andre Davis most of last year all of last year and this is a team where I mean they are going to they're going to challenge your manhood they're going to make Holding you stay in there on the offense 10 yard penalty repeat first down because they are a power football team an eye formation run the power game and they're going to attack your inside tackles and your inside linebackers and they're going to make you play football first and goal at the 16 a test for John Thompson and his defense. And uh, a little gathering of officials at the 16 yard line. What makes Miami so good? I mean, last year and this year is they're so well balanced. I mean, they can run and throw so well and they've got people at all the skill positions that can make big plays and hurt you but they just become the so difficult to defend from the line of scrimmage 10 yards repeat first down well, i think that may have been just a restatement of the penalty and what's amazing is how they reload now in coral gables i mean they lose jeremy shockey right. going to be a great player for the giants and in comes kellen winslow you know and uh, it's just amazing. They lose Clinton Portis, and here's Willis McGahee. And they expect to get Frank Gore back in October. Here's a little screen pass. Gethers got Romberg down in front, and Romberg with a convoy block. 18-yard touchdown. is such a fierce competitor. I mean, he's in there mixing it up with one of the defensive linemen at the end of this play. Well executed. Fake the throw outside. Jason Gathers lets the play develop. He's got Romberg and Myers out in front of him. They both get blocked. The extra point just cuts inside the upright. Gathers on the screen pass. Dorsey with a little trash talk to Shannon Snell. Receiver until injuries at running back. Dorsey switched back to his old high school position. Yeah, he was a parade All-American running back at Spanish River High School. And then uh, needed to switch to wide receiver or the running back when Frank Gore was hurt. Jarek Payton's been bothered by a back injury and uh, that makes him also very effective coming out of the backfield and catching the football with that receiver background as well. Todd Sievers will kick off for the Hurricanes. Last four possessions, three touchdowns, and an interception in the end zone to end the first half. And this one taken by Burnell Brown, and he is in trouble. Fumble might have caught it in the air. <laughs> wow. Things are unraveling for the Gators. Miami, the Hurricanes, they might as well be called sharks right now. I mean, they, they are swarming. Brunel Brown, a young guy, a defensive back, switched to wide receiver, and very, very fortunate. You know, he hesitated on whether to come out or not and probably didn't make a good decision to come out from that point in the end zone. And now Rex Grossman and the offense starts on their four-yard line. Single back set, three wide outs. Play fake, Grossman got his tight end, Aaron Walker. That's a big play early in this well, drive. And it's so good, too, because with the way Miami plays, with all this cover two safeties, they're trying to take away Taylor Jacobs. The middle of the field is where you have to attack. And so you've got to get the tight end involved. Aaron Walker going against the linebacker, D.J. Williams, right down the middle. On the quick count, it's Graham. Nothing there this time. Jamal Green, number 55, the senior from Camden, New Jersey. Randy Shannon, the defensive coordinator for Miami, has done a nice job getting his team ready for the quick counts, for the for the quick tempo of the Florida offense. They haven't been caught off guard or out of position yet tonight. Second down and ten. There's Randy Shannon, who played at Miami. One of several who uh, stayed home. Here's Rand Carthen, and in the middle, 
DJ Williams. Last time these two played, he was a running back. Now Larry Coker, of course, grew up in Oklahoma, but many on his staff are former Miami Hurricane players. Rob Chudzinski, the offensive coordinator. Art Kehoe, Arthur yeah. Francis Kehoe. Yeah. Randy Shannon, Greg Mark, the defensive line coach. Kehoe's been here with five different head coaches. He never left after he stopped playing here. Here's Grossman scrambling on third and 12 and takes a pop from Kelly Jennings up near the 31 yard line. It'll be fourth down. Again, good coverage downfield. They're playing with those two safeties. They force Rex Grossman up into the pocket. And they're running all over the place with these Florida receivers. And so far, nobody able to break loose. You know, I think of our conversation with him yesterday. Taylor Jacobs, obviously his number one man. And he was almost wistful as the punt goes away, talking about what it would have been like had either Gaffney or Caldwell not gone into the pros. Yeah. Flags all over the place. Well, they both could have come back. Right. And like he said, even if one of them would have come back, to have a big-time threat on both sides of the formation would have been huge. One of the factors that made Florida's offense so dangerous last year with three options. Jabbar Gaffney, Rache Caldwell, and Taylor Jenkins. Illegal block in the back during the return. Ten-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. 37-yard punt, 12 on the return. And what, what Ron Zook's got to be thinking of right now, his defense can't stop him. we got to knock the ball loose and turn it over. He's sponsored by Aflac, Alamo, The Home Depot, and by Smirnoff Ice. The listed capacity at Ben Hill Griffin Stadium, the swamp, is just over 83,000. The crowd this afternoon, 85,777, largest ever. Rex Grossman on the headset with his offensive coordinator, Ed Zonbrecher, upstairs. And Ken Dorsey has Miami with a first and ten, and the handoff goes to McGahee, and he is cut down behind the line of scrimmage. Well, Rex Grossman, Todd, tough afternoon. Well, he's never gotten into rhythm. I mean, they've beaten him around. They've knocked him out of his rhythm. Meanwhile, Ken Dorsey has been able to play in his comfort zone. They haven't gotten to him. They haven't knocked him around. He's been able to throw on time. And uh, a much better afternoon so far for Ken Dorsey. Dorsey in the cockpit now with a loss of four in the last play, second and 14. Falls down, intercepted. Ben Hartman has it, and he will score in. How do you do? I suggested that Florida needed to turn it over. They did one better. They took it into the end zone for a score. And you know, you don't see Ken Dorsey make many mistakes, but he made a mistake. He was falling down. He was stepped on by one of his linemen, and he tried to throw it anyway. Probably should have just eaten the ball and taken the sack, but he tried to get rid of it as he was falling down. Extra point is up and no good. Matt Leach. That's his second miss of the season. Missed a field goal earlier in this ball game. Missed an extra point last week. Nevertheless, Bam Hartman takes it in from 25 yards away. It's 27-16. Career interception, first touchdown ever. Strolls in unimpeded from 25 yards out. The extra point, however, missed, and it's an 11-point margin. You know, one thing you got to remember, and uh, you should have it corrected by now, but new kicker, new holder, new snapper this year, and that's a, you know, that's a, an intricate relationship between those three guys. And uh, to have two missed extra points and one missed field goal is not always just the kicker. Petrovich will kick off for the Gators. Andre Johnson and Gathers are the deep men. And Gathers gathers it in from two yards into the end zone.
sprints out to the 20 and dragged down by Reed Fleming at the 26 yard line. Mondays this fall on CBS. The network that brought you CSI takes you to a whole new world of crime scene investigation. CSI Miami. Mondays this fall on CBS. Florida defense right back on the field. They had a big turnover and a score, but they're right back out there and they still need to answer that challenge physically because Miami's going to keep coming at them now. Probably really emphasize running the football early in this drive. McGahee has had a big game and he adds to it with this run over left tackle out to the 39 yard line. That's a gain of 13. They haven't been able to stop him. Talk about kickoff team. This is Deshaun Wynn, a highly touted recruit out of Ohio, a running back. If you want to run down there, you better have your head on a swivel because they're going to take some shots at you. First down and 10 after the 13 yard run. Up the middle, can't stop the run. McGahee. They get the big turnover. Two plays, two runs. They're all the way out to the 50-yard line. Again, I mean, it's the same story for Florida. They've got to be more physical. And, and, and again, take credit, give credit to this Miami offensive line. Two new offensive tackles, Carlos Joseph on the left side, Vernon Carey on the right side, the veteran Brett Wamberg at center. On second down and three, they'll test the center where Reed Fleming is the middle linebacker now. Number 40. And this is Quantrill, Quantrine Hill, number 23. And it's going to be third and one. Third and one. Winston in motion. McGahee, close. close. You know, he stutter stepped a little bit. I mean, he was kind of peeking and picking and choosing for a hole in there, and it lost his momentum a little bit. And let's check in with Jill Arrington. Well, Vern, like Brett Romberg told us, this offensive line is a lot different than last year because everyone knew who the starters were last year. But this year, there's been a lot of animosity between the guys who's going to start. That's resulted in them being a lot more competitive, and you can certainly see that on the field every play. Each one of them is trying to prove themselves and why they deserve to be that starter. All right, Jill. <laughs> Vernon Carey, uh, who has taken over on the right side as close to 350 as he's ever been in his career. I mean, he's a very athletic guy, very strong, but has battled weight problems. Yeah, and that's not up to 350. That's down right. to 350. But Brett Romberg says he loves Bryant McKinney. He's a big, big friend of Bryant McKinney's, and he saw the, the fame, and now he's seen the fortune that Bryant McKinney has gotten, and it really helped him stay motivated this summer. Well, a good defensive stand on third and one. And that will bring on the punting unit. And Freddie Capshaw, who has had one blocked by Todd Johnson. I think if Kiwan Ratliff gets a chance on this one, if it's a short kick or a low kick, he needs to try to return one here, see if he can make a play. Again, Capshaw bothered by a right ankle injury, sends this one very high, quite short. And Ratliff takes it on the hop and pays the price. Well, that's a good move by Kiwan because if he keeps letting it bounce, it's going to go down inside of the five-yard line and Miami's going to down it. So he did the right thing, just nowhere to go. 44-yard punt, one on the return tomorrow. The NFL on CBS regional coverage. At 1 o'clock Eastern, Buffalo, Cleveland, Jacksonville, Carolina, and Cincinnati, the home sites. And it will all begin for the NFL today with Jim Boomer, Dion, Dan Marino. Little change now for Florida up front. Mo Mitchell, the new right tackle. They've moved Cologne into the right guard now. So Jurgensen is out of the game at the right guard spot. Jonathan Cologne, number 78, leads the way on this play as Graham follows his block out to the 13-yard line. Jonathan Cologne, one of the really 
interesting subplots to this game. In the spring of 2000, he signed letters of intent with both Florida and Miami. The night before the official signing date, it was determined he signed a letter of intent with Miami, and it was post-dated. Then the following morning, he signed with Florida. Later, the uh, Board of Inquiry and ruled in favor of uh, Florida, so he is now playing for the Gators. Here's Grossman. And Troop out to the 28. Nice job by Ed Zonbrecher moving his quarterback, Rex Grossman. A little play action and, and a little half a roll out there to find the throwing lane to Troop. They bring him in motion. He's got some momentum, and then they fake the run, and he's open there. And a nice job beating Howard Clark on the play. Gain of 14, first and 10. And off Graham to the 30-yard line, a pickup of two. Jonathan Vilma among those. I like it, though. I mean, it's, it's kind of a, that's a statement play. They're going after the Miami defense a little bit. Mo Mitchell, who just came in at right tackle, they're a little bigger now on the right side with Cologne inside at guard and Mitchell at tackle. And you can see the numbers for Grossman, less than 50%. That is a rarity yeah. for Rex. Second down and eight. It's hard to throw when you can only see out of your ear hole, though. <laughs> Showing blitz. Play fake. Half roll. Now full roll. Lobs it. Out of bounds. Yep. Aaron Walker got it. But came down out of bounds. Rex kind of got caught on that one. It wasn't open early. That's a play where you throw it quickly and it was not open. And he looked like he was going to run for a minute and then at the last minute tried to, to flip it to Walker. Big play here. They have not been too good on third down so far tonight. Two of nine, as a matter of fact. Third and eight. Same defensive look for Miami. Two deep safeties trying to take away the deep routes. And Grossman fires it. Carlos Perez, but that's short of the first down. He gets only to the 36. He needed the 38-yard line. And credit Kelly Jennings, playing with the cast on his arm, making a sure tackle in the open field. These Miami coaches love Kelly Jennings. They think he's got the same kind of talent that Ed Buchanan had, who was drafted in the first round. Same kind of feet, only a little bit even taller than Buchanan, but obviously hampered a little bit this summer by that injury to his thumb. But that was an excellent play. Epic Sands back to return the punt of uh, Jason Hunter has it at the 29 heads right chased out of bounds by Ferrier and a flag as an official went down Ferrier hit the official now two flags are gone I think this is going to go against Miami actually I think it was yeah. a late block on the play after the play that actually wiped out an official too I might be mistaken but I think uh, I think there was a late block after Sands had already run out of bounds. And when I say Matt Ferrier ran into it, or uh, hit an official, I mean he ran into him. And uh, Ron Zook is not too happy with it. After the play was over, personal foul on Florida, 15 yard penalty, first down. Now, just a little push at the end of the play. It is on Matt Ferrier. I mean, this, you know, we saw a bad call go against Miami. Here's Ferry at the end of the play. Just a little push. He was out of bounds, though. Clearly out of bounds. And, and I think a little maybe frustration on the part of Matt Ferrier. So the Hurricanes with a first down after the penalty at the Florida 40-yard line. First and 10. Reverse. 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 Roscoe Perez pulls up, throws it, gathers his deep. And it's knocked away by Gus Scott. Got there just in time. Well, you're not kidding. Gus Johnson. I mean, just in time. And Gus Scott is a playmaker. He's a guy who is, is going to be in the right spot. Now, here's Gus Scott. He's dropping back into free safety. He's reading the play. And when he sees Roscoe Perry's turn to throw, he knows my man's beat. My corner's beat. I've got to help him. And he gets his hand on the football. Gus Johnson able to get there and make contact right as the ball got to Andre Johnson. Handoff 
McGahee goes right. Akendo Johnson makes contact. That forces him out of bounds. Well, you saw a little bit of the touch that Roscoe yeah, Parrish provides. Threw that one nice. Yes, he did. Was probably, you know, noted as more of a running quarterback in high school, but obviously can throw it as well. And that was a great place for that call by Rod Chudzinski. I mean, you know, you get the ball, you get the penalty, good field position, take a shot at a big play. This one's fairly big. Yeah. Third and eight. 6.08 to go in the third. Hurricanes leading the Gators by 11. Hill comes in motion. And there is motion in the line. Well, that changes the complexion Fire here. Fire to the snap. Ball start. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Remains third down. Well, third down and eight is a lot different than third and 13. And if, if Florida had a man-type defense with pressure called on that third down play, maybe they can back off into a zone on this one and just make the tackle underneath. And Larry Coker knows that. It's a big difference trying to convert third and eight and third and 13. Parrish goes right. Ray Johnson and Kevin Beard come left. Corner blitz. Dorsey flushed right by Hardman. Pulls up and fires it incomplete. Bam Hardman, who earlier returned an interception 25 yards for a touchdown with the pressure on Dorsey. Yeah, and a good call by John Thompson. He brings Hardman. It's not a full-out blitz. They're only rushing four, but he gets by McGahee, and then he chases Dorsey. And again, when you get him moving his feet and moving sideways, he loses his accuracy considerably. There's Bam Hardman, and Freddie Capshaw is on the punt on fourth down. Kiwan Ratliff awaits it. Fair catch. And let's check in once again with Jill Arrington. Well, I found Kerwin Bell down here. He's a former Gator quarterback. You played Miami in your first game in 1987. Or do you like seeing the renewal of this rivalry? And what does it mean to these two teams? Well, watching him on the field here back at the Swamp for the first time um, brings back some great memories. And um, I think after this game, the rivalry will sort of come back to life. Um, the teams will draw battle lines, and um, it will become as great as it ever was. Let's look, watch this play. All right, on first down, Grossman in the shotgun from the seven-yard line. Last time they lined up like this, they tried to throw just a little quick screen to get the ball quickly to the back receiver. Here it is again. There it is. Two tight ends out to provide the blocking. And Kelvin Kite makes the grab. We go back down to Jill with Kerwin Bell. Now, as a quarterback, you were one and three against Miami, so you know firsthand the pressure that Rex Grossman is under coming in as a Heisman hopeful. What does he need to do to get back in this game? Well, I'll tell you what. Anytime you play Miami, a quarterback better be ready for a, a tough physical ball game. And um, his mental toughness has got to show. And, um, I think he's doing that. He's staying in the game, keeping his head in the game. As long as he'll do that, um, he'll be able to lead the Gators back to a victory, hopefully. All right, thanks a lot, Vern. All right, Jill, one and three, but that one was 17 years ago tonight. Mm. And it was in the Orange Bowl. Florida knocked off Miami on September 7th in 85. And after that loss, Miami won 58 straight games at home. Kerwin Bell had a big night against Vinny Testaverde in the hurricane. Here's Graham on first down. Boy, did you see D.J. Williams blow this play up? I mean, D.J. Williams, who is playing so much differently than he did a year ago. You know, he's more comfortable now as a linebacker. Watch D.J. Williams blow this play up. They bring Mitchell in to lead on the pull, and he just blows it up. He knocks Mitchell down in the backfield and allows his teammates to come and finish off the play. Personal foul, face mask on the defense, 15-yard penalty from the line of scrimmage, first down. That's the 10th penalty on the Miami Hurricanes, and they have been really critical penalties. I mean, not every one, but several of them have been critical at, at you know, on critical situations. And again, we reemphasize this is a Big East officiating crew. Offensive line change again now, Todd. Uh, David Jurgensen is back in at right guard. Cologne moves out to right tackle. 
That's for Florida. Here's Grossman on first down out of the shotgun. Roll to the right, pulls back, looks deep. So you can throw that away now. He was outside of the tackle box, so that's okay. He had an intentional grounding penalty in the first quarter because he didn't get outside. But again, uh, Miami doing a great job of coverage, and they haven't had to get out of their basic shell. They've been able to keep those two safeties, Sykes and Taylor, splitting the field. Take a look at Santonio Thomas, another one of the interesting players on the field. He actually signed with the University of Florida, but uh, the admissions committee found problems with his, S his uh, ACT score and denied him admission. So Steve Spurrier called Butch Davis, and he signed with Miami. Here's a pass, Kelvin Kite. I think we're going to get another penalty, though, a holding penalty on Alfonso Marshall as Kelvin Kite was trying to come back to the football. Now watch Kite. He sees his quarterback in trouble, and as he tries to come back, boy, hmm. I mean, a little hand on the uh, shoulder. On the defense, 10 yard penalty from the line of scrimmage. First down. Uh, that is two penalties, a pass interference and a holding that have gone against the Miami secondary that have been very, very shaky. I mean, you know, could have been easily a no call. And again, at a critical time, Rex Grossman facing a third down and long situation now has another first down at the 50 yard line. Or the 48 rather. And the 11th penalty against Miami tonight. On first and 10, Graham reverse. Here comes Taylor Jacob. He's got great speed. Gets a block downfield from Jonathan Cologne. And Taylor Jacobs on the reverse to the 36-yard line. And if Rex Grossman doesn't get a block on Jerome McDougal, this play goes for a loss. Watch Rex Grossman. They exchange it, a double handoff. Now when Taylor Jacobs comes around, he's got to cut inside the block of his quarterback, Rex Grossman. It's right to the right of the screen. You can't really see it, but there's McDougal diving for the ankles, and he was blocked by Rex Grossman. Gain of 16, a first and 10 at the 36-yard line. Grossman pumps. Overthrown, intended from Matt Jackson, number 19. See, the other thing that has been a problem for Florida is nobody else has stood up on, the, on another receiver and has come up and make a big play. And we've seen Jacobs get involved and make a couple plays. Aaron Walker's made a couple catches, but no other receiver has made a big catch down the field yet for this Florida Gator offense. Seventh play of this drive. Draw play, Graham. Got a hole, breaks a tackle. Stopped inside the 20 at the 18. Big run. Big run by Ernest Graham, just when they needed it. I think Miami was thinking pass here. They're getting up the field on their pass rush. Look at the block by Jurgensen. Outstanding block on William Joseph, and then a missed tackle by Cornelius Green, and another first down for the Gators. That's a gain of 18 and a first and 10. They trail by 11. Grossman State drop back. Contact flag. First down. This one now, this pretty one understandable. Looked, this one looked a little more uh, legitimate. It's on trail roll again. Coming over the top on the little slant route. Pass interference on the defense. Ball be placed at the spot of the foul. First down. Take a look at the right-hand side of your screen. You'll see the quick throw on the inside, and there's the contact. Coming over the top of Taylor Jacobs. Keep an eye on Aaron Walker here again. If those safeties are going to stay split, the middle of the field might be open for the tight end. This is the first and ten. There's Grossman under pressure, shuttles it out. Stiff arm by Graham. Boy, they got something out of nothing. Yeah, absolutely. Heads up play by Rex Grossman to get rid of the football, and then the great stiff arm by Ernest Grant. But that looked like he was going to be stopped behind the line, and he just stood his man up with the stiff arm. Grossman trying to throw quickly left. It's not there. And then how he 
does this, gets away from Howard Clark and just flips it. Now watch this stiff arm on Vilma. Man, that's some power by Ernest. Second down and five at the 11. Grossman, draw play. Rand Carthen. They're getting tougher. I mean, they have been tough on this drive. They've been helped by some penalties, but when they've had to run it, they've knocked Miami back off the ball a little bit. And Rand Carthon, giving Ernest Graham a break, comes in and runs it in there tough, too. Timeout call for the measurement. They'll bring the chain out. Now here comes the chain. Rex Grossman has been battered tonight. And improvised his last play, and then, boy, did he hit the deck. Yeah, and that's a big man. That's Will Fork at about 350. You know, in the NFL, they'll call that a penalty. You can't drive a quarterback down like that, no matter what the situation is. And you take a look at those numbers, eight hurries, six hits, no sacks, but they've hit him enough to make him uh, a little bit aware in there, that's for sure. But Third and short, hit. excuse me, Todd. There's Randy Shannon again right there, defensive coordinator. He's got his teams in a tough situation right now with the ball on the six-yard line. Power eye. They'll try and go with a quick snap. They do. And that's going to be very close at the five. Looks like with that second effort, he might have gotten the first down. Yeah. But Miami has been ready for that quick count. I mean, they've been up and lined up. They get lined up quickly. They go power eye. And it doesn't look like he has it there, but he keeps driving the legs and... Very close. Good surge by the Miami defense. So we'll stretch the chain again. Well, it's, a, it's just amazing to me. There are teams, good football teams, all across the country that would love to have two, maybe three good defensive linemen. And this team has eight Miami. It's, it's amazing to me that they could have so many good players in that front four. And, uh, what, a, what a foundation to build your defense around for Larry Coker and Randy Shannon. There's one of them, Andrew Williams. Saw San Antonio Thomas in there a while ago. And Ernest Graham is the only setback now. Three wideouts on first and goal, Florida, at the Miami Five. Single coverage out top. Grossman looks that way. Well covered. And Taylor Jacobs just could not get position and get separation. That was Jennings again. Yeah. He's their best cover guy. I mean, he's playing with the cast, but they love his feet and his ability to play man to man. And you put your best on their best. He just squeezed the field that time on Taylor Jacobs. By the time the ball was thrown, it was out of bounds. A little quieter night for Taylor Jacobs tonight. Four catches for 46 yards. He caught eight for 246 last Saturday night. Second and goal. Corner blitz. Grossman into the end zone. Picked off. Here comes Maurice Sykes. He's got some help. One man back. And Maurice Sykes will go in for the score. 98 yards. I think Rex Grossman got caught staring on this one. Maurice Sykes, he kind of eased up on the throw and tried to guide it in there, and Sykes was reading the quarterback the whole way. He was freed up. He didn't have any coverage responsibilities, and he made a huge play. Seavers with the extra point. Capshaw, a nice job of getting the snap and putting it down. Larry Coker leads the applause. Boy, oh boy, what a turnaround. First and goal for the Gators. And the next play, touchdown. And Grossman, you can see he kind of short-armed that one. He didn't step into it and throw it. He was backing away as he tried to get it to Perez. And Sykes reading it the whole way. What a play by the Miami defense. Uh, let's change the yardage and give Maurice Sykes one more yard. Make it officially a 99-yard return. 
Again, the pressure. Rex Grossman was backing up when he threw it. He didn't get to step into it. And Maurice Sykes made him pay for it. Is right. Maurice Sykes, one of a quartet of new starters in the defensive secondary. Boy, once he got to the 15 yard line, nobody around. And again, Sievers for that effective kickoff. Touchback, it'll come out to the 20 yard line. And a disheartened Rex Grossman, I'm sure, has to come out and reignite things. Well, and, the, you know, the good news for Rex Grossman and the Florida Gators is that we're still in the third quarter, okay? I mean, it's a, it's a big lead, and Miami's awful good on defense, but there's a lot of time left on the clock for Rex Grossman. That was a... Uh, Look at him. He, he's, he is a competitor now, I'm going to tell you. He wants to get back on the field and get after it again. He knows he made a mistake. He's going to try to make up for it now. Here's Grossman. Draw play. Carthen bolts out across the 35 of the 27. The suddenness of that is just is yeah, shocking. I know it is. They put together a 13 play drive, goes 88 yards there at the six yard line, and like a bazooka, yeah. they go 99 the other way. And this does not bode well for Florida, does it? No, it doesn't. Other than the fact that Florida's used to scoring a lot of points themselves. First down and ten. Carthen. See, that's the thing. There's no need to panic right now. There's lots of time left. A minute and 50 left in the third quarter. They don't have to, you know, abandon the run and start throwing it every down. They're down 18, but there's a lot of football left to be played. Second down and eight for the Gators here. With 1.35 to go, third quarter. Ben Troop move to tight end. Knock them back five. You know, they just, Miami has been so disciplined on defense. Ball start, offense, five-yard penalty, remain second down. And you know what, I think that Randy Shannon has decided, I think he said, you know what, we're going to give up some running plays. I am not going to put another safety in there against the run game. We're going to give up some plays and hope we don't get burnt by it, but I am going to keep two safeties back there to keep Taylor Jacobs from running down our defense. And we're just not going to give up any big plays in the passing game. And Florida has not had any long, big plays in the passing game tonight. Timeout is called by Miami just prior to the snap. And the time comes with 1.25 to go third quarter. Thirty-four, sixteen. Maurice Sykes with the second longest pass interception in the history of Miami. Selwyn Brown in 1985 had a 100-yard return against Boston College. Now Rex Grossman <laughs> on second and 13. Here's Rex Grossman harassed. Goes right, chased by Vilma, hit by Vilma, incomplete pass. Just a reminder that he's in the neighborhood. Yep. Well, this defense can run so well. I mean, you know the secondary can run, but the linebackers, Vilma, and DJ Williams, who you said used to be a running back, Howard Clark, they can all run. So when you start going sideways against this defense, you're not going to do very much. Third and 13. Prevent look for Miami this time. Three deep safeties. And an adjustment now by the Florida Gators. Rush four. Grossman off his back foot to Perez. Incomplete. Fourth down. Well, our traveling caravan will move over to Columbia, South Carolina. A week from today, we'll take on Georgia. Watch uh, Georgia take on South Carolina. The Gamecocks at home. 
Ranked 22nd in the country, Georgia ranked 10th. Idol this weekend at Saturday at 3.30 Eastern time. South Carolina playing at Virginia tonight. Another big game on the road for them. Jason Hunter with the punt. Ethnic Sands with the return. You know, I went back and watched the Sugar Bowl game a couple years ago, and even though the defensive system of Miami was a little bit different, the bottom line was they were still able to not let Rex Grossman get into a rhythm. They were able to knock him around, get to him enough to where he never got into a good rhythm. And they've done the same thing tonight. I mean, even that last third down throw, throwing off his back foot. They've got to him enough, they've bothered him enough to where he looks uncomfortable at times in the pocket. And that, we've seen enough of Rex Roseman to know that, that uh, when he's in a comfort zone, he is almost unstoppable. Ken Dorsey, meanwhile, has had much the easier of it tonight when pressure is concerned. Here's a handoff. And Gethers gets it out to the 46-yard line. Well, let's take you back to that 2001 Sugar Bowl. In New Orleans, the Gators scored first as Kirk Wells got this touchdown pass. From that point on, all Miami. Dorsey, then as now, with three touchdown passes. Some guy named Jeremy Shockey caught that one. Dorsey threw for 270. Butch Davis and the Hurricanes finished the season 11 and 1 and ranked second in the country. They came back, won it all last year. Second and four. Gathers, watch out. One man, Johnson, gets him out of bounds at the 19 yard line. I made the point that this offensive line they think is better at run blocking. What a block by Carlos Joseph. Number 76 just literally collapsed the right side of the Florida off our defense. Just just pile drive the whole right side down into the middle of the formation and gathers with a great big hole to run through. One more play in the third quarter. We've got three seconds remaining. Andre Johnson, Roscoe Perry, break off wide to the right. Dorsey back under pressure. Let's it go. Caught. Intercepted. Second mistake that Ken Dorsey's made. And again, he doesn't make many. There was a mix up at the start of the play. Somebody went the wrong way, either the running back or Dorsey, so they didn't get the right play fake. And then he just kind of threw this one up for grabs. You just don't see him do that. Todd Johnson's second interception of the night. That's the end of the third quarter. We'll return right after this message and this word from your local station. Miami leading 34-16, and this does not bode well for the uh, Florida Gators either. <laughs> Miami 152-2 when leading after three. And Florida now starts from inside their own five-yard line. Rex Grossman and the shotgun. Stunts again, lobs it out, incomplete. Second down. You know, Rex just, I mean, he is, he's antsy right now. I mean, he does not look comfortable. He's, uh, the pressure of Miami has gotten to him a little bit. Well, and the sting of that 99-yard interception return yeah. seems to dishearten the whole team. Well, you know, they're still in it. I mean, and, and you're right, though. That took a lot out because they were right there getting ready to draw closer, draw it about eight points in this thing. And, uh, and now they're, they're back up in their own territory again. Rex Grossman has missed his last seven, one of which was the interception return for 99 yards. Now he's got one to Aaron Walker out to the 25-yard line. And that's the way to respond like a big-time Heisman candidate. He goes under the center this time. He takes a good, solid drop. He plants that back foot, and he steps into the throw. No falling backwards on this one, and he delivers a strike to Aaron Walker. And again, Versus that too deep look of Miami. The middle of the field is open if you can get somebody running down there. First down and 10 at the 26. He's there again. And this one is too far. And it's picked off. Intercepted by Sykes. Second interception for Mo Sykes. 
Mark Stoops said he was feeling pretty good about this young secondary the last couple weeks. They try to get it to Walker again, right in the middle. He's open, but the ball is overthrown, and Sykes right there to make the play. Rex had what he wanted, just couldn't get the thing down. And what a nice interception by Sykes, keeping his arms under the football. Well, Sykes, no return on this one, but his second pick of the evening. And a first down, Miami at the 48-yard line. Dorsey hands it off. McGahee, look at him run. Unhindered. 24-yard game. You know what's amazing to me is that this team could lose 11 guys to the NFL, five of them in the first round. And they could come back and look this strong at this point in a new season. That's scary to me. Well, last week it was Jason Gethers who picked up 199 yards on the ground. Tonight, on his 21st carry, McGahee has reached the 194 mark, and he will add to it here. A fumble, but the ball had been ruled down. They called him down. You know, when we talked to the Miami players this week and we asked them about, you know, do you guys really feel like you can repeat? I mean, is that legit? And they, they said, absolutely. And they started talking about repeating as national champions as soon as the Rose Bowl game was over. And uh, Ken Dorsey was one of those guys, you know, that said, hey, we're, we're going to get better. We're still hungry. We want to go out and keep winning football games. And I think they definitely are a legitimate title contender again. There's Winston leading the way. McGahee closing in on a 200-yard night inside the 19. Well, they are trying to repeat as champions. And here's the list of uh, the teams which have, who have accomplished that in the last 52 years. Nebraska, the latest, 1994 and 1995. Go all the way back to the Bud Wilkinson teams of 55 and 56. A man named Bryant at Alabama. A man named Doherty. A man named Royal. Pretty good coaches yeah. on that list, too, huh? Pretty good ones. And here's Larry Coker, undefeated as a head coach. 13 and 0 coming into this one. Dorsey across the middle. Touchdown. Miami gathers 19 yards. Second TD catch of the night. And again, remember, he's a former wide receiver. They slip him out of the backfield late. They let the other receivers run down the field, and then they slip gathers out late. Here he is. We came across late. He acted like he was blocking, and then he released late, and Ken Dorsey just found him as a little outlet receiver. Extra point from Sievers is up and good. Gathers gets his second touchdown of the night. Ken Dorsey has thrown for four. Kyle wide receiver, but he has caught two touchdown passes tonight out of the running back spot. And 48 yards after the interception, bingo. Pretty you know, the, impressive. The thing that makes Miami so impressive is that they they don't, they're strong at every place. I mean, they can run the ball, they can throw it, they've got this talent at all the skill positions. Defensively, you know, the question about their secondary I think has been answered pretty well tonight. And Ratliff will uh, take a knee. It'll come out to the 20-yard line. Well, more tennis coming up for you. The Williams sisters battle for the women's championship at the U.S. Open. Serena Williams against Venus Williams. Our crack crew, Dick Edberg, Mary Carrillo, John McEnroe will be there to bring it all to you. U.S. Open women's final following our football game. You know, for two girls who don't really like playing against each other, they sure do it a lot, they don't do they? <laughs> yes, they do. First and ten. Draw play, Grossman, Graham, back to the 20. It's Rand Carton. Now let's go upstairs and check in once again with Tim Brando. All right, Vern, I'm still here. Let's take a look at our Kinko's top performance of the day. An opportunistic Oklahoma defense. Strong safety, Eric Bassey, picks up this 
fumble, carries it back 45 yards in the final moments. Sooners number two in holding. Back to Vern. All right, Tim, thank you very much. Tim doing his uh, emulation of the drifters and staying up on the roof. And that pass is uh, complete to the 25-yard line. Good to have Tim and Spencer with yeah. us, isn't it? We should make this a regular occurrence. There he is. Got a pretty good seat. Get them out of the comfort of New York City and on the road. You know, even though Alabama lost that game, that's a pretty impressive effort for Dennis Franchione's team going out to Norman, playing all the way well into the final minutes of that football game. It's interesting because Dennis Franchione came and spent a few days with Larry Coker and his staff this summer to talk to him about how they rebuilt the program with the probation and the loss of scholarships. Here's Grossman, Grossman rather, and he uh, gets the first down out to the 40-yard line. A pretty good move he yeah. put on. And no quit left in him, as you can see. I mean, he's still going to fight to the very end, no matter what happens. No slide, neither. He, he, he was going shoulder first on that one. Gain of 15 for Rex Grossman and a first down. Backs up, finds Taylor Jacobs. And Jacobs uh, has the ball knocked loose, but uh, a little too much swagger from the Miami secondary, and they're going to get penalized again. After the play was over, personal foul, late hit on the defense, 15-yard penalty from the line of scrimmage, first down. I led with his head, you know, that, that was the problem there by Sean Taylor. Came in there with his face guard first, and uh, just not necessary. And again, you know, Miami has escaped the penalty problem tonight. I mean, you know, 13th penalty, but so far, you know, it's not going to hold him back. It doesn't appear, but uh, something Larry Coker certainly will want to address. Uh, you saw the numbers for Dorsey and Grossman. This one down the middle, incomplete. Good nice. coverage deep from Vilma. Yeah. Some people might watch that play and say, well, wasn't that face guarding? But there is no face guarding in college football. I mean, you can run down there and not look back for the ball as long as you don't make contact, and John Vilma didn't. John Vilma's looking at the eyes of Aaron Walker, and when he sees him focus on the ball, he puts his hands up instinctively. That's a nice play by John Vilma. Second down, 10, Florida, trailing 41-16. Comes the rush from Jamal Green and great coverage from Matt Walters, number 91, who is the inspirational and physical leader of this ball club. And again, defensively. the depth of this defensive line. This is a screen pass. It's the fourth quarter, and your defensive tackle, Matt Walters, is running this play down. Here he is right here. Watch him read the screen and then take off. He sees it, he reads it, and then he tracks it down. That's a veteran play by Matt Walters. He read that screen, screen so quickly, he was able to make the play. Third and 15. Three-man rush now. Indicated by Miami, they'll send four. Grossman back, and that one's almost picked off. Knocked away by Sean Taylor. Well, just look at the body language of these Florida receivers. I mean, it's been a frustrating night for all of them. They've got their hands on their hips. They're walking off the field. Nothing easy. This Miami secondary, the big question mark, all these freshmen and sophomores, how would they handle playing against Rex Grossman here in the swamp? They have answered the call tonight. They have really been outstanding. And helped in no small measure, Todd, by the pressure of the front four, actually the front yeah, eight, because absolutely. they rotate those fellows in and out. And here's the punt. Out of bounds inside the five. It'll be marked at the uh, two and a half yard line. Ten minutes, one second remaining in the swamp. It's all Miami right now. Is sponsored by Ford. Gateway. Fidelity Investments. And by Jack Daniels Original Hard Cola. 10.01 to go in this one. Miami's first visit to the Swamp since 1986. This is a home-and-home -home series for only two years. Because the 12th game was added this year, the two schools agreed to play in Gainesville this year at the Orange Bowl next year. And then discuss a possible game at a neutral site for 2008. 
Out of the backfield, it's Gethers. Mike Natillo with the tackle. You know, one of the things that, that is a real luxury for Miami, we talked about the rotating of the defensive linemen, but how about the ability to rotate Gethers and Willis McGahee, and they've got Jarrett Payton back now. They're going to start working him into the action, and Frank Gore back in October. And the depth and the fresh legs that they can keep running in for this powerful running game is uh, what an advantage in football games. Gethers is the deep back in the eye here with Winston in motion, the tight end. And Gethers out across the 10. And time now for the Home Depot Scholar Athlete Award of the Week. Ian Scott, number 99 for the Florida Gators, with a grade point average of 3.50, his major systems engineering. Home Depot's commitment to the investment of our future is shown today by donating $1,000 to the University of Miami's scholarship fund. Ian Scott was also an outstanding basketball player. Gainesville High School was a starting center on a state championship basketball team. There's the stretch of the chain. And just so we uh, don't confuse folks, that $1,000 scholarship will go to Florida. Yeah. Where Ian Scott is matriculated. I think Paul D. would have taken it. Yeah, I think he would, <laughs> yes. Folks down there in uh, Coral Gables. But... Long night for Ian Scott and his teammates, and it all turned on a 99-yard interception return late third quarter after Florida had driven 88 yards to the six-yard line, trailing by 11. Here's Gethers again. Well, he had 199 last week. McGahee tonight at 199. And they continue to add to this uh, ground total. And I wouldn't be surprised if they don't bust another long run here soon because Florida is kind of selling out now. They're putting a lot of guys around the line of scrimmage, figuring that Miami's going to run. They're trying to outnumber them in the running game. And uh, if you get through that first line of defense, you've got some open field. So uh, if, if Florida misses any tackles here, we might see another long run by either Gathers or McGahee. Second down, five. Good tackle. Reed Fleming, number 40, makes the stop, and it'll be third down. Miami running the football tonight, just doing an outstanding job. Well, like you said, Todd, they are so well balanced. They're well balanced. They're big and physical up front. 276 yards running the football now tonight. And uh, when you can do that, you just open up everything in your offense. You can protect your quarterback. Your play action game is effective. Romberg and McGrath among those in the offensive line. Here's Gethers, who is, uh, well, I thought he was knocked down. He struggles forward. He'll be fourth down after the tackle is made. Romberg a little slow getting up after that play. Now, Romberg out of Windsor, Ontario, already has his degree getting his master's degree in sports administration and he is a trip oh he was fun to talk to he is he? great fun he is one of three canadians on this offensive line you got romberg shirko haji Rizzuli, who uh, was born in iran but lived also in argentina and germany and then joe mcgrath who's on there right now from moose jaw saskatchewan appropriate that an offensive lineman would be from moose jaw yeah it has to be offensive lineman couldn't be you know a punter or a wide receiver or anything it has to be a Offensive lineman. At least we didn't call him a big ugly. <laughs> Nora Haas and a half. 48 remaining in this game. Top ranked Miami going after its 24th game in succession. Here's Grossman. Hammered, knocked down. Vince Wolfhart. And here is the CBS Sportsline stat of the game, rushing yards. Miami has rolled for 279, 199 of them. We've got a penalty being called against Miami for personal foul. Florida with 163. Now, Vince Wilfork with the excessive celebration. And you know, sometimes I think that that's... You know, is an abuse penalty. They they do it too much. That one was a case where he did, you know, kind of try to draw attention to himself and 
Didn't need to do that. And Larry Coker's telling him that, hey, great play. Just go on back to the huddle and celebrate with your guys. Now, you saw that rushing stat. And normally, when Florida rushes for 160 yards, you think, oh, man, they're going to win the game big. Because that you know they figure they probably threw for three-something. Right tonight, only 181 yards passing for Rex Grossman. And uh, plus, when the other team rushes for almost 300, pretty tough. You got words to describe what we're watching? <laughs> well, the sympathy ends. <laughs> Second and 12. Grossman, Taylor Jacobs. Down to the 33 yard line. Everything's short. Now, Miami has not given up a big play. Last week, you knew it wouldn't be like it was against UAB for Taylor Jacobs. I mean, they played him single coverage, and he just ran takeoffs and posts and corners and did whatever he wanted. But uh, everything has been short. Third down, two. Graham nailed William Joseph. <laughs> And that'll bring up fourth down. And uh, obviously Florida with no choice but to go for it. How would you like to, to keep trap of the grocery bill for the Joseph family? You got William, that big fella playing defensive tackle. He's 6'5", 285. His brother Carlos is a starting left tackle. He's 6'6", 315. My goodness. Well, the two boys are sons of Haitian immigrants. Here's the punt. They do decide to punt, and it'll go into the end zone, come out to the 20 yard line. Matt Jackson down there. Four minutes and 58 seconds remaining. Hurricanes up 41 16. The field goals gave Miami a 6 0 lead. Ernest Graham put Florida on top after the extra point, and then a field goal from Matt Leach. Gave them a 10-6 lead. But Ken Dorsey toward the end of the first half with a couple of touchdown tosses. This one to Jason Gathers, 27-10 the score. Bam Hardman with an interception return for a touchdown made a 27-16 missed extra point. And here is the key play of the ball game. It was ruled a 97-yard interception return now. From that point, Miami roll. Jason Gathers with his second touchdown of the night. And uh, Sebastian is uh, having his way with the Gator. <laughs> Larry Coker still hasn't tasted defeat on the football field. Spent a lot of his career in Oklahoma. Graduated, as we said earlier, from Northeastern Oklahoma State. Coached at Tulsa, coached at Oklahoma State, coached at the University of Oklahoma. Was on the staff with uh, John Cooper at Ohio State, and so also was Ron Zook. Yeah. You know, I haven't seen Tennessee yet this year. They play Middle Tennessee tonight. We'll see them on the 21st against Florida, but you would be hard-pressed to show me a better football team in college football out there than the Miami Hurricanes again this year. Second down and five. McGahee has now gone over the 200-yard mark. He's got 204. And a second with Jill Arrington. Vern, for both of these teams, and especially the 131 players on these teams from the state of Florida, this game is about bragging rights. Now, this year, all three Florida schools will play each other, Florida State, Miami, and Florida, and they'll be playing for this, the Florida Cup. The winner of that series will take this cup home, and if there is a tie, the team that allows the fewest points will take this cup home. And I must say, Miami seems to be well on their way to getting this cup. Third down and five, Jill. Yes, they are. Well, they led the nation last year in scoring defense, only allowed nine points per game. So uh... here's another running play as they work on the clock. Well, if that Florida Cup goes down to Miami and stays there, it's going to join a couple of other trophies that have been hidden in the archives in Miami. They also have possession of the Seminole War Canoe and the Osceola Cup. Both of those. Captured in this series with the University of the depth of my research oh, is boundless, I, I, you, isn't it? You're staggering me, my man. You know, I never dreamed I'd get the uh, Seminole War Canoe and the Osceola Cup <laughs> into the broadcast. <laughs> we weren't expecting to go that deep, were we? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh dear. Here's Gathers again. 3:22 to go. Derek Crudup is on. Ken Dorsey done for the night. Well. 
these two men, the top candidates going into the season, I think, acknowledged Grossman and Dorsey, second and third in the Heisman voting last year. They actually had a rather frightening experience while they were back for the ceremonies. They got stuck in an elevator for 45 minutes. Dorsey and Grossman with a photographer from USA Today. Rex said they didn't say a word to each other. The photographer did all the talking. They were just worried about getting out. And they did, obviously. But uh, had to have some help. Here's Gethers again. Well, we began the night talking about these young kids. And I think the guy wearing number 11 is telling the guy wearing eight I had the better night. Yeah. I also had better protection. I didn't get knocked around quite as much as you did, Rex. Time call. When it's second of the season, it's 26th overall against Florida. They'll break the tie. Both teams have won 25 coming in. Next up for Larry Coker and the Hurricanes Temple. I think they might be favored in that game. Yeah, slightly. Bounce it to the outside. And this is Peyton who gets his first action this evening. Walter's son, Jared Payton, who has been bothered by a series of injuries the last couple of years that hampered his progress. I will never forget, Todd, when his dad went in the Hall of Fame in 1993. Jared Payton, at 13 years of age, made the speech to present his father in Canton, Ohio. What a wonderful afternoon that was. Yep. He's another one of those guys who didn't play organized football till late in his athletic career. Was an outstanding soccer player in the Chicago area. There's a play fake. Kruda, oh, Kruda does hand it off to Payton to the 45-yard line on first and 10. Well, the Sunday night lineup, Sunday on 60 Minutes, you know who the villains were. Now meet the heroes. Sunday on a two-hour 60 Minutes with the usual cast, Mike, Morley, Ed, Steve, Leslie, and Andy. Then it's an hour of comedy with Everybody Loves Raymond on a special night and Becker on a new night, followed by CSI. That's the lineup tomorrow night. Second down and nine, and we've got the Williams sisters battling for the U.S. Women's Championship at the Open in New York as soon as we're done. Jared Payton. Yeah, a touch of sadness also a part of this University of Miami football team a month after they won the national championship in the Rose Bowl actually six weeks after Chris Campbell linebacker fatally injured in an automobile accident and so the team wearing a decal with CC on their helmets and of course uh, the Florida Gators again this year honoring their uh, freshman teammate Eris Auten Eris Auten who died uh, in July a year ago after a practice here in Gainesville so they still have the patch in his memory here's Peyton again <laughs> 35 seconds remaining and time to honor our player of the game Willis McGahee with 24 rushes for 204 yards both as you note, know, career highs just an outstanding night yeah. as uh, Miami punishes the Florida Gators. An excellent execution. Rob Chazinski, the offensive coordinator, nice blend of pass and run. And, you know, Larry Coker, I think one of the great things he did when he made Chud his offensive coordinator, he had been the coordinator. He said, I'm going to take my hands off of him. I'm going to let Chud be the offensive coordinator, let him run the offense. I'll be a head coach, and uh, he's given him a uh, full reign. And, uh, well, they're rewarded tonight. Well over 500 yards of offense. You ready to be stunned? Go ahead. 306 on the ground. 306 and 202 passing. Wow. Pretty good night. Fourth down. Capshaw's punt bounces and comes to rest at the five yard line. You know, another amazing thing is uh, this place was such a hard place to play. And the last two times we've been here, we've seen the home team, Florida Gators, get beat. Tennessee at the end of last season in a memorable football game. And tonight, 
the Miami Hurricanes with a complete domination of the Florida Gators. Two losses in the last three home games. They did defeat UAB in the home opener last uh, Saturday night. But that uh, that's not a direction you want to travel. No. Grossman is still out there. Still competing. Miami had to call a timeout because they only had 10 guys on the field. And trying to get the right people in the game. Ron Zook. I mean, it, it, this season is far from over for Florida. I mean, this is a tough loss, but there's a lot of big football games left. They open the SEC schedule on the 21st against Tennessee up in Knoxville. will be another huge challenge for Ron and his staff. You know, with the 12 games this year, it's going to be hard for any teams to go undefeated. I mean, that, that's asking a lot from anybody this year with an extra game and championship games and conferences. And Here's the handoff. And uh, Carthen out across the 15 to the 18-yard line. You know, I'm just watching Rex Grossman still out here competing with 13 seconds to go yeah. and thinking of Peyton Manning of Tennessee when he was installed. And, and this is not – I, I think Grossman was the favorite – quote right. for the Heisman coming into the night and Peyton Manning said you know the problem with the whole build up thing uh, is that that he was put on this pedestal and then just critiqued and never to death uh, over the course of the season and uh, I, I, I mean Rex Grossman had a tough night but I don't know that he's any less a quarterback after no. what we've seen tonight than he has been over the course of a stellar career and you cannot question his toughness at all because he hung in there from start to finish. And Ken Dorsey had a better night, but Rex Grossman will still have a great season. You watch. Well, let's go down to Jill Arrington with Larry Coker. Kevin, congratulations. This is a big win for you up in the swamp. If there was any doubt, your young team surely stepped up. Are they well on their way to a national championship? Well, we've won two games. We played awfully hard. I'm very proud of the effort we had, Jill. It was just a tremendous effort. We made a lot of mistakes. And, and, uh, but I like the way we, we got down, we came from behind, and, and uh, we stayed there, we stayed the course. I'm very, very proud of this football team, this coaching staff. Congratulations, Coach Vern. Back to you. All right, Jill, congratulations to Larry Coker and the Hurricanes, 41-16. The win streak goes to 24 in a row. Dorsey, four TDs tonight. His record, 65 touchdown passes and 28-1 and as a starting quarterback. Coming up next, the Women's Championship at the U.S. Open. The Williams sisters battle for the title. 41-16, the final here. We'll see you next week from Columbia for Jill Arrington and Todd Blackledge. I'm Vern Lundquist saying goodnight from a drained swamp.